Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> That's a good bike right there, boy. What to do, God Thumb? It's your funky onion. <laughs> Shout out to Shot Town. Uh, it's your funky neighborhood snooze kicker, Rogers. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, I want to look into celebrity worship. Ooh, that's a good bite right there, boy. <laughs> mm. All right, so I want to look into celebrity worship because. Obviously, with what happened with all these so-called black celebrities that get selected to be the representative of black people, a, a symbol, if you will, or some shit, then, you know, those who operate the political structure, the power structure, then they also understand that you can utilize these people's celebrity. Like, celebrity can be utilized as a power, all right? So... I want to try to get an understanding of if it was already worship in the beginning, right? If it's already worship, then what happens to that worship that engage, you know, with the social media? Having the social media, the having of of them actually having direct access, if you will, to a celebrity or something like that. So let's see, let's see. Uh, we got, you know, one of the greats here. You feel me? Uh, David Chappelle. Right. <laughs> uh, he no longer used that voice, you know what I'm saying? The voice is, you know, they've been settled. <laughs> they've been settled, you know what I'm saying? Like a, um, like a Susano. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so let's see what he has to say. Just so we can get a little bit of an understanding, right? An hors d'oeuvre to the context. Here we go. Stop worshiping celebrities so much. Just don't listen, pay attention. I remember right around September 11th, uh, Ja Rule was on MTV. That's what they said. We got Ja Rule on the phone. Let's see what Ja's thoughts are. <laughs> on this tragedy. Who gives a fuck what Ja Rule thinks at a time like this, nigga? This is ridiculous. I don't want to dance. I'm scared <laughs> to death. Let's see what Ja Rule thinks about this. I want some answers that Ja Rule might not have right now. I mean, yo, you got to ask yourself, MTV, is that, you know, nothing against Ja. Yo, respect Ja. I think, I think Ja got a bad break. You know what I'm saying? He was stepping on a whole lot of mother, a whole lot of people's toes, right? So... <laughs> Yeah, you know I said like I, people had like Ja couldn't spit. Okay, everybody knows Ja Rule could spit, but due to his beef with Fifth, all right, he's trash. All right, all right. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, who's backing up Fifth? Oh, okay, yeah, the white boy with the with the blonde hair and the with the fake blonde hair with the do rag on. All right. when bad shit happens to me, I'll be in the crib like, oh my God, this is terrible. Cause somebody please <laughs> find Ja Rule, get hold of this motherfucker so I can make sense of all this. <laughs> Where is Ja? Where is me Ja Rule. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why people listen to me. I'll say anything, nigga. I've done commercials for Coke and Pepsi. I don't give a fuck what comes out of my mouth. I just say what it takes. Whatever it takes, that's what I'm saying. If you want to know the truth, can't even... Message? <laughs> that's the message. The message is, look, I, I say anything for money because that's the way, that's the way that you have to play the Hollywood game. You gotta say anything. You gotta say anything for money. Pretty much do anything for money. <laughs> Message. <laughs> so basically, you know, Dave's just tripping off on the fact that people worship celebrities. All right. Taste uh -huh. difference. Surprise. All I know was Pepsi paid me most recently, so 
taste better. That's <laughs> pretty much how the game goes. I'm just being real, man. It's too much goo gog and over celebrities. People don't know what's fake and what's real anymore. All right, so this was in 2004, right? It was in 2004. Usually when a comedian puts something together, you know, back in those days, it could have been like, you know, three to four years past before they present it, right? Back in those days. They couldn't, you know, when bringing out material like that, right? So that was 2004. Let's just say around 2000, possibly. You are probably understanding it being within the business 10 years prior or whatever. So it was already worshipped then, right? Now you have the advent of social media and everything. It's, it's more than just worship and it? then then it turned into something else like everything got hyperized with you know the screen the screen door if you will <laughs> not just letting it win <laughs> it's not just letting it win <laughs> oh yo and, and shout out to youtube shout out to youtube uh found out that they're they really are like shadow banning my stuff and they're tracking me right they're tracking me there's a there's a certain kind of video it, there's an image of a video that just won't delete it's not shown to y'all it's shown to me and it's like wait a minute what is that and i don't have access to delete it but it stays up no matter what <laughs> so they taping <laughs> Yeah, that's a good bite right there, boy. That's why Bill Cosby got in trouble. Look what happened to Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby said some real shit and the whole world freaked out on him. <laughs> for what? For having an opinion? Just because he was selling pudding pots for the last 40 years, people forget that he's the nigga from Philly and the projects. And he might say some real shit from time to time. All right, now that didn't, that didn't age well. <laughs> This was prior to all the conviction that they tried to put on Cosby with 50 white bitches. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was saying I was put something in the white bitches pudding. Mm. <laughs> like Bill Cosby got a, come on now. Hmm. Anyway, so they brush up celebrities. Let's switch this over to Preach at That Day, Respect Out. <laughs> what? Worship of celebrities. It's got to be a lot worse than it is in this, you know, in, in these current days and times. It's got to be worse because look, look at what, what happens with. Um, look what happens with. with the scope of influence that they're able to develop with the youth like they were it was already worship with the youth right youth was already worship with something because they're not even understanding their own worth and everything so more than likely when they do pour into an adoration or something it's going to be very like worshipy if you will right for real now let's see what is what that change has been uh According to an expert, uh, Dr. Uh, what his name is? Yeah, David Colorossi and Michelle Rivas. Respect. So we're going to show this one. And this is share the screen. Here we go. The psychology of celebrity worship in the age of AI or in the age of social media, which is very interesting, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, if it was already worship, then it can only evolve into, I guess, a, a, a higher deterioration and, and an attachment, right? But what's higher than worship? What's more intense than worship? <laughs> All right, let's see what it says. 
Hello, Psych2Go viewers. Our guest for today's live stream is Dr. David Kolarossi, host of the highly entertaining channel Pop Psych, where he discusses and analyzes different reality TV shows, movies, and celebrities. Dr. Kolarossi is also a licensed psychologist with an MA in marriage and family therapy from the University of Southern California and a PhD in counseling psychology from the University of Denver. Dr. Kolarossi also works as a corporate psychologist, consultant, and executive coach. Welcome, David. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. That was a very I good. Want to tell, tell you one thing: if there's any pilgrim dude that's watching this, look. When y'all here start doing that, y'all need to cut that shit, man. For real. All right. Ain't nobody gonna call you a skinhead. You'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> any any man who get their hair like that, come on now, really. Unless y'all gonna do the Stevie Wonder shit and have it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know. Intro, I appreciate it. Of course. I'm so excited. Here. To, no, of course. Yeah. And I'm such a huge fan of the channel. I think that you're doing amazing work. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I'm excited to discuss the topic, which is psychology of celebrity worship in the age of social media. The internet and social media has become so ingrained in our daily lives, and it's really changed the way we view others, especially celebrities. The internet and social media have made it so much easier to take a glimpse into their lives. And for many people, they feel like they almost know their favorite or not so favorite celebrities on a personal level. So first off, my question for you is, what do you think are some of the psychological reasons why people become so emotionally attached to celebrities, even though they've never met them before? And what do you think is the implication of this? I think it's a, I think it's a good question. So, um, I think. Oh, no, you you already got, you already got. All right, then. So you think you know weeks? You think you can do the features, but do you really know? <laughs> uh. Everybody's an editor now. Ain't that, ain't that a trip? From a psychological standpoint, I think Everybody's it's the perception wow. of vulnerability. So I, th I think that the celebrities that are the stickiest as far as having an audience and people wanting to listen to them and follow them and the, the people that you really connect to, I think there's the perception that they are being transparent about their life. Did he say the celebrities that are the stickiest? No diddy. <laughs> the celebrities that are the stickiest. How fitting of a fucking turn, right? Live, their lives. And I think that that is, you know, if you think about anybody you have a close relationship with, it's always because at some level, because of vulnerability, either they share a lot about themselves, either you've been through something serious or you have history, all of which sort of at the end of the day is transparency and vulnerability. And with social media, uh, people are able to share what they want about their lives, but they share it in a way that comes across as transparent. And like, like think about the Kardashians or Vanderpump rules or any of the. All right. So a perceived vulnerability, that's what everybody, uh, well, that's what all the, the experts of the mainstream was saying that was the appeal for Richard Pryor. Wow. He's so vulnerable. We've never seen a comedian be so vulnerable. Vulnerable? Nah, he was just telling like your T.I. is. There ain't no vulnerability when you speak. When you speak your truth, it ain't got nothing to do with no vulnerability, right? But it's received as vulnerability, especially to those who maybe subconsciously to themselves, the people who are the so-called fans and the fanatics of these celebrities. Perhaps maybe they understand that they're living, you know, a, a false reality. And if they're going to live a false reality, then perhaps maybe they they should take an example of one who seems to thrive at their participation and portrayal of a false reality. Hence them being able to possibly been able to glean some, um, I guess what, vicarious, vicarious absorption or something. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Those, like the, they're clearly highly produced, but the perception is that you're really getting a unique view into this person's life. And I think the fact that there's that vulnerability <laughs> there, that's that's why it's sticky. That's why people are interested. I Does that make sense? That. Yeah, like they can connect with that. It's relatable. It resonates. Yes, yes. yes. And, and I think from a psychological mm -hmm. standpoint, there's a lot of reasons why we are interested in that. You know, if you think about 
a much smaller society, if you were if we were a group of 20 people, it's really important that we know everybody that we live with, right? But if you go back years and years and years and we're we're in a tribe, it's important for us to know within our tribe or our clan who are who is everybody and, and it's it would be a social skill or a, or a social connectivity, right? Also playing a part in how one identifies themselves within society, reality, all of that, right? We are one. <coughs> right when I was finna hit that old, that damn onion hit me. What the fuck? <laughs> In the words of Frank Beverly and Maze, is that Frank Beverly and Maze or is it Earth, Wind, and Fire? We are one. Right? You know, it's, it's, it's Ubuntu. I am because we are. Y'all remember that one? You know what I'm saying? Those of y'all remember your, your Pan African studies? <laughs> I am because we are. Things like that. Well, that that's that's foundational humanity. <laughs> For real. for survival to be able to listen to people be interested in people and learn about them and their intentions so i think we are like from an evolutionary standpoint built to be gossipy in that way yeah and now it, it doesn't serve us as well but now it you know it shows up in vanderpump rules and we want to learn everything we can about the different toms I'm you know what i'm saying right respect, bro. <laughs> Scandal all all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um in yeah. recent Louis years Kanye, though, due what to it social do, media man. the concept you know I mean? of celebrity has been redefined Ooh, right? in the past qualifying as a celebrity okay, usually on, meant on, being me an actor an actress i don't know people started coming in respect y'all <laughs> i have much respect yeah yeah that's frank beverly and Mays already <laughs> appreciate that brother <laughs> We are one. You know what I mean? Shit, I just love them vibes that that, that that music put on us. And it's like, yo, can we really see each other like that, though? You feel me? Though. Hmm. Oh, yes, sir. Most definitely. Thanks for that reminder. It'll be two hour pass and I forget that joint. <laughs> Musician, an athlete, or a super famous politician. So it's definitely changed in recent years. However, we're living in an age where social media has made it possible for anyone to be a celebrity or a social media influencer. Mm. In many ways, people aren't just obsessed with celebrities anymore. They are obsessed with becoming a celebrity. So looking at it from ah, both sides, nice. in what ways is that something positive and in what ways is it destructive, especially as it pertains to a person's mental health? Well, let's go back to that one. Yeah, that's, Welcome, that's a, Lewis, a, a big respect, question. Brother. So I, I, and the first uh, question I didn't answer, what's the implication of that? Wait a minute. And I think it, it ties into the, your second question, which she, is, uh, put, I, I think that now, our obsession with celebrity all right. She said she, yo, she, she lays some game right there. Everyone's obsession with becoming a celebrity. Yee. I mean, so becoming a celebrity. Yeah. So looking at it from both sides, in what ways is that? Like, like, I right, then. If they... <laughs> Everybody obsessed with becoming a celebrity. Brother Lou, what to do, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? Shit, maintaining, fam, maintaining, growing, you know what I'm saying? Not drinking milk, but, you know what I'm saying, staying hydrated. <laughs> yes, sir. Already. <laughs> Feeling nice on a Saturday. <laughs> so, um, how much have you heard so far? I didn't even know that people started coming in. Uh, I, I just hopped in because uh, AB, he shut his, uh, his show down because he was sick. Oh, okay. All right. Let's hope, hope you get so better. Hey, me, through, get you some, some when, water and lime, y'all. Shit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Look, I practice what I preach now. <laughs> when I went to um, my home screen, I, I seen that you were live, so I hopped on. All right, then. Welcome. Welcome. Because I, I, for some reason, I don't even get the notifications when you come on live. 
and I hit the the bell and everything. So yeah, look, YouTube they already let me know they on shadow ban my channel, and and I think they monitoring like a mug. So it's like all right, then I'm doing something right. <laughs> doing something really right so appreciate that youtube I, I guess i guess having a hater can mean you're doing something right i never really wanted to measure things based off of you know what i'm saying cause of others you know i guess the distaste for my delivery or whatever but all right then you know what i mean fuck it hate on hate on hate on youtube hate on <laughs> with your hating asses shit all right then, so let's listen to this uh I just now tuning in. You rocking with your funky neighborhood snooze kicker rope, son. Yeah, brother Louis Kanye just step up. And we're going over, uh, you know, celebrity worship in the age of AI and the age of social media. It was already bad to the point where Dave Chappelle had to say something about it in the special. You know, people get killed for that. But appreciate you for taking that. <laughs> taking that, that, that uh, dare, Dave. Appreciate that. <laughs> but now we go, we got some experts talk about it something positive and in what ways is it destructive especially as it pertains to a person's mental health yeah that's a, that's a, a big question so I, I and the first question I didn't answer what's the implication of that and I think it, it ties into the, your second question which mm -hmm. is I, I think that uh oh more money more money uh oh here we go here we go what, what are we doing what are we doing some false some false fucked up the destruction thing like 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 come on man see this is the sign y'all you don't pay attention to what they show you on the news you pay attention to that which they wish to have before you to, to entertain yourself with that's what it's all about it's not about the actual s subject themselves it's, it's, it's about what they want to get you accustomed to something that's just regular something that's just ah just flippantly all all these guns and all this shit. Look, war ain't war ain't supposed to be for no motherfucking fuck, huh? <laughs> the age of empire. Yeah, you know, okay. <laughs> Session with celebrity can cause is it can be negative in the sense that you everything is so artificial. So obviously, it, it's easy to create an unrealistic artificial. standard nice. of existence. And I think that that puts a lot of pressure on the viewer, on the audience. I, I also think that it, um, I, I think, and this fits with your second question here, when anybody can be a celebrity, when anybody has a microphone, when anybody is listened to, um, it's not always easy to vet your sort of circle. You've probably heard that you are, whatever the saying is, you are the sum of the five people you hang out with most. And I think in some ways that's a really it's really beneficial if you are, um, you know, if you are a disenfranchised individual and you can go on and you can find people that motivate you, people that uh, who inspire you, people that you can be like and you work towards that, then it's wonderful. But if you pick the wrong person because you're not really able to vet these five people now that are all, you know, virtual then I think it can derail people. I mean, so basically you're saying, well, fuck, if you're going you're gonna to worship somebody, there's going to be some worship there anyway, so. <laughs> what, what the fuck? <laughs> if it's going to be some worship, then worship somebody positive. <laughs> I mean, wait a minute. You know, well, they don't know who to pick. They don't know who to select. It's like, well, what does it mean for you to, okay, so. Where is it? striking thoughts book all right it's probably in the bedroom but i was gonna hold up a book by bruce lee called striking thoughts what the hell i do with it anyway um this this book or my okay my um my understanding of 
the fuck is my dog? Yeah, my my understanding of whatever my connection was in understanding Bruce Lee and understanding martial arts, let's say that the start of it was somewhat on the fan side of the game, right? Or someone that was intrigued by the art. But I understood that within his expression of martial arts, it went deeper than fighting. You could tell right off the bat how he engaged. It wasn't just about fighting. Philosophical. The that, yeah, the, 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 you, you saw his philosophy within the art. It was, it was there. You didn't have to be taught it. You're like, yo, it's, there's, there's something specific in that punch. There's something specific in that kick. Um, when you started understanding his philosophy, I got a book called Striking Thoughts. I've had, that's the oldest thing that I've owned, right? That's my, my oldest uh, item on, um, personal item on. First thing I bought when I got, uh, joined the military and, and went to, where we went to? Went to Coronado. And, uh, Marine Corps? Nah, nah, nah. I was in the Navy, but corpsman. So, used to train. Green side or blue there. side? So, what's up? Was you green side or blue side? Red side or blue side? No, was you green side or blue side? Was you a corpsman with the Marines or with the Navy? No, no, the Navy. So you wasn't attached to no Marine units as a corpsman nah. then, right? Uh, okay. No, 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 no. No, I, tr I tried to dodge as much of the killer aspect of the killetary as I could. That's why I went in, I supposed to go in as a jet mech, but um, I'm like, you know, it hit me. It's like, nah, cuz you can't be killing nobody. You can't be, can't be killing nothing. And so I figured that, all right, let me go in as a healer or whatever. And you know, all right, what's, what's the thing dealing with healing? Dealing with positivity of, of interacting with somebody. Well, you, when you're young, you don't know how to put two and two together like that. You ain't got nobody in your corner telling you that, all right then. But um, it's, it's subconscious though. Yeah, yeah, it's the subconscious. And it's like, all right, then, let me, you know, I made myself a promise, so I'm gonna stick to that promise. I'm not gonna kill a person. But let's say that you're, you're proxy um, accountable as well due to actually being that which supports the potential removal of people in such a degree. So if I was thinking, I would have been, yeah, you know, I don't know, something the furthest away from the shit. Killing mentality all the same, don't get it twisted, but you know, I, not on behalf of, not on behalf of that which I wouldn't understand what I was killing for. I couldn't do it. Um, and if I am going to take any fucking kind of life, it's going to be for for the sake of me, for the, for the sake of my own, me, me, my own, and everything connected to that. Uh, but all I have to say this, yeah, I started off as a fan of Bruce Lee. Swiftly ended up desiring to be a student, not just of the fighting technique. We're also speaking the, the philosophy. We're speaking of a thinking process where if I encountered that thinking process within anybody that was on my block that I encountered or whatever, it would have been the exact same thing. It'd be like, yo, the way that that brain works, the, the, the way that this person can think about combat, like, you know, and I was a fighter. So, you know, all right. When you have someone that can put such a structure to fighting or such a structure to anything that you're already partaking of, it's going to, okay, cool. But with these current celebrities now, it ain't, it's, it's, you know what I mean? Let's say, let's say Bruce Lee, he was definitely going to become a celebrity, right? Ha, <laughs> nice knuckles. <laughs> he was definitely going to become a celebrity. Um, but, he would have been a quality person to um ain't, ain't doing too much sorry sorry tall black guy you're doing too much though it's supposed to be relaxed <laughs> niggas attack you with the hi-hats and shit <laughs> right. um i'll get back to it with this um he was going to be a celebrity right um anybody that that has those type of dynamics the type of expression yeah Okay, it, it looks good for the camera, for TV, for the box office and all that. 
but you don't get people creating fresh philosophies in hand-to-hand combat like that. That doesn't just pop up. That's a human thing. That's a, I don't give a damn if it wouldn't have been Bruce Lee and let's say it would have been some pilgrim that was racist than the motherfucker. Hey, cuz, that pilgrim know what the fuck he talking about. That peck of wood, redneck, red, red wood, know what the fuck he talking about with that. <laughs> it's, all, it's, all, it's all about the, the actual quality that's there. The quality wasn't in the fact that he was a celebrity to me. The quality was in the fact that he was an actual student of what it was that he was presenting. Yes, he was a martial artist, but he was a student. He was a philosopher. You saw that in the art. You saw that in the way that he structured the characters. It's like, yo, wait a minute. This is this is different. This is not just punching and kicking. This is not just a karate flick with this cat. There's meaning behind this. To me, that's what if 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 you do partake in, and you're going to interact with a celebrity or or uh, inf- influencer or whatever. I guess those are the new celebrities, or whatever. Then you want. It, it, I think it would be best if you could actually feel something behind what it is that they're presenting. Something more. It's not just oh wow what they what they did and that's in this scene and it, and it's just you know that's the thing that follows them throughout the whole career. It's like nah wait a minute. So I can and it wasn't no vulnerability. It wasn't you know what I'm saying oh my God Bruce Lee was so vulnerable. Fuck that. <laughs> Vulnerable, all right then. Nah, that, that's quality here. You feel me? I right, say, what's happening, Turbo? <laughs> what to do, Nulu? Peace to the God. All right then. You got something you want to say on that one, uh, Lou? Before we? Yeah. Um. Thing? Well, it, it, it's it's a different generation now. Um. With us, we're we're Gen Xers and the like you were talking about bruce lee you had more of a substance it was more of a substance and um a storytelling in a movie more than you saw with the action definitely and, and the the these kids now they they brain is so that one they have no creativity for the most part a lot of people that that view shit, and i think it's oversaturation of media compared to when we came up and we talk about the philosophical let me ask you something um they used to buy a lot of dvds i do not nah Nah. well me whenever i bought a dvd if it was a favorite media that came out i always bought the the one with the director's commentary because i want to watch the movie when the director is commentating it about it because I want to know what was his philosophical view when he was making that movie so yeah. I could see the movie through the director's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to know what was behind it. And you 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 don't have you don't have that today. And and, and think about it. It and, and today, look, you got you got your TV, and now YouTube has taken over TV. And there's an oversaturation of media that's being di- disseminated that I don't even think the, the mass journal audience is properly taking in what they're seeing. They're just watching it just for stimulation. That's it. Just to is, watch is, it. That, but see, that's the thing. <laughs> Shit. That's why I'm trying to avoid, dog. This is why I say screen doors, cuz. You know what I'm saying? When you're in the Matrix, from the other side of the Matrix, a screen isn't just a screen. A screen is a doorway. But a doorway in the what? You know what I mean? A doorway to your mind. Why? Shit. For real. And and these youngsters, I think, okay, one, I think that's what, when it comes to humans, period. All right, let's say that we're designed to be able to absorb a lot more information than any, than a lot of other things within reality, all right? That means that it's designed to actually have an effect on us circumstances information uh direct specific words can be very triggering you feel me and then you pair that with uh 
actual presentation. To me, I think that's why it's very dangerous that, you know, the LBL done got the stances that they did as far as reading the children and all these different styles of presentation and shit that's very distorting to the, nat you know, natural balance and shit. And it's like, but, go ahead. sorry. No, you got but, but here's the thing, though. Um, and I, I agree totally with that. But what I have to admire about it and not for their, I don't agree with their lifestyle. I admire that they practice power. And, and, and it's funny. <laughs> right. I, I once, uh, this was years ago, um, it was during. Um, I, I, I was bored and I was watching PBS and it was during Pride Month, so I decided to watch. It was a documentary on the the stone the the Stonewall movement with, okay. with with them, and and the thing was how they achieve power. They they followed and studied the 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 civil rights movement, and yeah, it's funny that doing. every yeah. group that has achieved power has studied our movement but we didn't fully apply what we should have and that's why we stuck in the predicament that we are in right now well we weren't in it to create power we was in it to create favor excuse me those earlier black people was in it to create favor they weren't in it to create power if you're in it to create power you ain't gonna have you know you gotta understand you gonna you ain't gonna have no friends you gotta understand that if you encounter some racist motherfuckers, you better let them be racist because you're trying to you're trying to it's power acquisition you're going to put some <laughs> bad taste in people's mouths and you're not going to ask for no love you're not you're not going to put yourself in a position to even have to turn cheeks or or turn favor i love my enemy Fuck all that you already know what it is when you're operating from power and and, and, and look how they achieve power though like you know you um because i live in jersey and and like the hub new york city where you had a bunch of look you had motherfuckers that were kicked out their homes because their parents didn't agree with their lifestyle okay and they had a community that they supported their own their rainbow flag is they fucking battle flag like if, if you go stole. through new york city if you go through new york city in the village that's all you see is rainbow flags and what that's what that signals is that this is a, a friendly zone for <laughs> that lifestyle. But guess what? Hmm. Other businesses caught on to that. And when you go out through the city, they have a sticker of that flag on their window, which means, look, it is okay for you to spend your money here in this establishment. But what they did in the village, look, they had their own social group, um, counseling groups that they took in people that were kicked out of their home. They had their own businesses because they were being discriminated against. But wait a minute. All that don't mean nothing because it's already a part of their fucking community. It's already a part of their culture. Sure. Kicked out of the home for what? Look, all these motherfuckers got some kind of, all the white comedians got some kind of story about being touched up with some priests, right? Oh, yeah. If that was already being known that it was happening in the churches, in the boys, in, in, in the fucking, in, in, in the, um, in the uh what they call them in the in the boy scouts right in the girl scouts the whole thing with what, what you know the, the the sneaky um the 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 sneaky college coach or the sneaky high school coach that was always some pilgrim shit, huh so it's like all right yeah, wait a minute that goes it's, throughout their, their history huh because they, they they lived in harsh environments and the, the environment fuck harsh so environments nigga they used to fuck they used to fuck motherfuckers in the ass for slavery <laughs> goddamn no, I'm corralling about, dog wait a no, minute I, I, I'm about, no, I'm <laughs> i want to hear yeah. about them motherfuckers having their heart <laughs> no no I'm, no i'm talking about their origin because they grew up in the in where the snow at and the ice that the environment was so harsh if they lay with a woman that a child would come and that's a yeah you, you create team. another mouth and shit right so they learn so to fuck each other in they, the ass off practicality they, they, they had to go into the <laughs> into the butt for pleasure and then they became christians <laughs> i did <laughs> 
All right, dude. <laughs> so I'm saying, so I'm look, saying the, the your elements. Look. Like like Dr. Chris Francis Wells has said that the white man's <laughs> anus would be the new vagina. So, yo, or was that Dr. No Nicola? Diddy? Was that no Nicola? Diddy? Look, I mean, look, it, it makes sense. They try to take over everything else, so they gonna they gonna take over their own woman pussy. They want to be that. He want to be his bitch now. <laughs> they trying to take everything. <laughs> Trying to take everything. <laughs> he wanna be his bitch now. <laughs> People's psychological development in a really significant way. So the, the example I would give would be the Kardashians. Um, Kardashians, huh? They are obvious people. They're obviously very entertaining. People want to watch them. But if you look at their individual lives, if I said, would you want to be Khloe Kardashian and everything that she's been through, every, her sort of psychological well-being, right? I think a lot of people would say, I, I don't I don't want the, the infidelity. I don't want the divorces. I don't want the body image issues. I don't want the right. I don't want I don't want I don't want a lot of things. <laughs> Right, but we just want the but we're, list, we're, we're listening to that content, and I think it can distort how we see ourselves and how we show up. That was a long-winded yeah. answer. Does that make sense? No, that completely that makes sense. Like people kind of want the the glamour, but they oh, don't really chakra. want all the baggage that does come with being famous. Yeah, and I don't know that because people can control what's what they put on the internet, especially uh, people that have the resources to do so, um, they can paint a really unfair picture of what's actually happening exactly like it can yeah. be manipulated yeah so yeah. as i mentioned earlier fame and celebrity has been redefined by the presence of social media if someone goes viral even if it's for something terrible they can become a celebrity overnight lately there's been a trend of giving significant <laughs> media attention to con all right wait a minute so with that being the case then that means that you're dealing with a public who's largely been acclimated to entertainment as their primary stimulant you know what i'm saying not not just any entertainment i mean ju just entertainment period not specific entertainment just entertainment like all right if if somebody you know can become a celebrity doing some stupid shit, I, look what happened to talent what happened to actually being able to have to 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 be precise and sharp like like back in the day if you suck you sucked you couldn't like now you can rap off beat you can <laughs> you can rap off beat you can not even know how to dance nothing has to be sharp no more you ain't even got to open your mouth to even sing you ain't even got to actually be singing but <clears throat> but roguish the here's the problem though we're in the same age group, right? Yeah. A large majority of our time wasn't dedicated to entertainment. A lot of us, we, we had our foots out on the ground. We were socializing. We were dealing face to face, human to human, skin to skin. Right. Yeah. Smelling Live each other, stinking breath. We were, we were we were engaging with each other. Now most of these people, they this this is their socialization is in front of this fucking tube. <laughs> yeah, no, let, 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 let's be for real. Look, look, how 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 many motherfuckers like motherfuckers don't even read no more. We came up in a time where you 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 sharpen your your, your brain. You had to. You, Look, like what I entertain, look, public enemy. Public yeah. enemy was that got me into hardcore reading. Okay. Okay. No, look, when you you, you were proud, like you were proud that the, the information that was being disseminated was on a on a positive conscious level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was it was something to it, I, it, it I mean look cool. it was cool to to know, to learn like with, with self pride to know who you are and where you come from now like you, most of these channels that that got the top views is either somebody like some 
eating food, acting a fool, or video <laughs> game. Like, you got people that will watch people play video games instead of playing the fucking game themselves. Yeah. Or it's old fashioned. Look at me. Look at me. Like, that clout, the clout chasing generation. And it's all about clout. Like, when we went to watch a movie, a media, it, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, we were there. It was a small portion for our little entertainment. We we taking our chick, I brought it with us, and, and then you know we're doing other things afterwards. Exactly. Now we're in this digital age where it's just nonstop consumption, and and everybody's brain is fried because of the. But it's it's not viewed as consumption, though. Lo. It's not viewed as consumption. It's viewed as entertainment. entertainment. It's just mere, well, we merely. Just really entertaining. Entertain. <laughs> Let me get a laugh. Let me go see what Rogue is doing. Yeah. I mean, but that's why I deliver the way that I do, though. I make sure that I'm delivering reality. I tell it like a T.I. is. That's why I present exactly how I'm living, what it is I'm eating, what, what, I, what you know what I'm saying? Is, is y'all are chilling with me in my crib. I'm not playing music for the sake of the, uh, the broadcast. Y'all chilling with me in my crib. This is how the fuck I chill. <laughs> like, look, so look. you feel me? So so the thing is the 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 element of understanding that yes, I am participating within um I guess you could say entertaining, but prior to that, i my I've always been, you know, about creating my own television network since nineteen ninety eight, before any there was a YouTube and all the rest of this bullshit. You feel me? Um but I never wanted to be an entertainer. Entertaining does run within my family and everything, you know, but also does education, you know? And as far as it goes with entertaining, the thing what I wish to create, um, what I, the thing that I wish to create a, um, a, a television network for was because of what was perceived as, what, what was delivered as black, as black entertainment was received as black reality. It was in 1998 when I realized around, you know, going around the world and shit. It's like, yo, these people really believe this shit. This ain't just TV to them. It's reality to them. And the reason why it's reality to them because they don't have the real live, you know, uh, uh, element around them. So it's like, all right, then how can we present some addition to all these poor portrayals of us or these inadequate portrayals of us that's being received, right? It, it, it might not be real life, but what else do people got to, to understand us through? So that was my perspective, you know? And yeah, okay. Be some entertaining with it, but my my goal ain't to entertain a motherfucking body. I don't give a fuck none of y'all entertain. To inform. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm here to set I'm here to set some fucking standards. Or, or and some clarity. <laughs> it just so happened I come from some very entertaining people. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a fucking byproduct, cuz do not get it twisted. Cause it'll be just the same as in real life. Mama's house, daddy house, the church house, the school house, the work house, whatever the fuck. <laughs> you get roguish no matter what. <laughs> For real. I don't know I don't know how to be nothing else. It ain't finna be. I don't give a fuck how much money I get, how much celebrity I, I develop, what what happens to any status if I get famous or go viral or nothing like that. It, nah, because this 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 is this is a a reality of a third grader of a pissed off third grader, just matured. That's it. <laughs> I just been really paying attention to a lot of shit since third grade. That's all it is. <laughs> and I ain't never changed from that motherfucker. <laughs> it ain't finna. <laughs> shit. An artist and plant, animal, mineral, dinosaur, or a deity. It's not just a tagline. Controversial figures such as the Tindler Swindler, Anna Delvey, Elizabeth Holmes, and so many others. 
in a sense, due to celebrity worship, do you think that the media tends to unintentionally reward these individuals who commit atrocious acts, such as making Netflix documentaries about them and so on? I mean, for example, oh, Anna Delvey got paid for the recent Netflix documentary that was made about her. So do you think that this almost enables and emboldens them? Uh-oh, look on the money. Uh-oh, here we go. Okay, now notice this. Notice this. <laughs> We, we're talking about, you know, uh, you know, the, okay, so the video is psychology, excuse me, psychology of celebrity worship in the age of social media, right? Now, these are the style of commercials that gets attached to this shit. Why? What does simulated warfare got to do with everything? Why is everything got to be some form of either simulated warfare, actualized warfare, Prep for war for if it, you know what I'm saying? It's like like straight up a war nation. It's a trip. You would think that there would be some hey, you know let's let's why not why not, take, why not take this psychological test or something like that? Nah, it's, it's hey, it's been about three hours video game? killing something that one? ain't that don't need to be killed. I mean, but that's the thing. That's why that's why what I stop. That's why I stopped being a gamer because. It, it was it wasn't about video games no more it wasn't about puzzles it used to be about puzzles and and you know what i'm saying exploration and shit man all this shit is now becoming simulation and with the advent of ai being as good as it is to the point where it can create entire movies i'm pretty sure it's going to be able to create entire video games okay it, you can't just call it gaming no more you can't just say we're playing video games. You, can, you know what I'm saying? Because that, that keeps that old ethos to it. Now, this is it's simulation. It's reality simulation. And I'm not down with participating in no kind of reality simulation unless, you know what I'm saying, it's something that I could definitely withdraw from, you know, at, at, at a given moment. But anytime that it's, it's difficult to withdraw from it, that's that right there is the issue. We ain't talking virtual reality. We're talking a simulated one. You feel me? that that but but yeah you know i think the media does a major disservice if you think about school shootings and they've changed a little bit where they're slower to put, put, put to put people's names out there um but still if it, it if people don't have a strong sense of self and they're just looking for some <laughs> amount of strong sense of self attention they're looking to have some kind of impact on the world it's easier in many ways to do that if you are provocative right you you are like i think a good example would be and i don't mean it in a negative way but like jake paul so is able one to I think develop, about who has you're able to develop I, a facsimile identity if you don't have a strong sense of self, how does one develop a strong sense of self? What is what's what's one of the what's some of the the healthier factors of establishing a strong sense of self? What is the essential health healthy standard of a strong sense of self, especially within a society that tends to promote illusion as the preferred style of living, of reality? I mean, you know what I mean? Especially, and again, remember why I bring this up? The youth, as, a, as again, my, my understanding of Bruce Lee came very, very young. I'm 45, all right? Bruce Lee got started in the 70s. <laughs> I was born in 79. So my understanding of Bruce Lee came, you know what I'm saying, within the early 80s after he died and it was like yo wow wait it's like 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 wow it wasn't wasn't something that was like fanatical this person no longer here put my screen up you talking about bruce lee oh it's not yeah yeah is that big boss the ori original big boss coffee no 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 no, no, no. Um, that's uh that's uh the way that's the, the one dragon, where he was in Chinese. france right I'm trying to, th yeah, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's the one where he was in France. 
Yeah, the way of the dragon. Yeah, way of the dragon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got the, the the Chinese coffee. Yeah, that's what's up. Yo, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, he, he he put his philosophy all all in his all in his art. I mean, it was it wasn't just somebody punching and kicking, and you got that from everything that he presented it was like yo wait a minute it is you know never had encountered any martial art before that and I, you know it was already a fighter right you know okay a, a killer who wasn't killing so that's a fighter <laughs> but oh um, it was like yo wait a minute how is it how, why is there too why is there so much to the way he do it that's what it was with me it wasn't the why I was like, all right, then, yeah, that's vocal expression and all that. But his but, essence as a human came, was expressed out of him through his energy. Yeah. And you feel the sincerity through his art. I mean, it was, it was, it was complete. You can see, you can see the efficiency in the fighting, right? Of course, it was choreographed and everything. But again, you can see the efficiency in the fighting you can see that it wasn't a lot it wasn't a lot of and the blocks and the 89 blocks before you get to the to the connecting punch right no i mean like your typical shaw brothers film i mean you know what i'm saying there's nothing wrong with that you know what I'm saying? there's nothing wrong with a little bit of flair a little bit of you know what I'm saying showcasing of your skill but he was showcasing what was effective and that's what I picked up on it. Like, whoa, okay. Yes, okay, it was quick and everything, but that would definitely catch somebody off guard. You could watch Bruce Lee's choreo chore choreography and, and realize that, yo, that would actually get somebody off guard. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. That would actually be, that would yeah, that would be effective. That's, hmm. You know, it was a martial artist behind the actor. And... Uh, and a, a student of martial arts and a student of why to, of, of how to engage in combat he had already got the understanding at that whatever young of age it was that he was doing those writings he already understood that you're not fighting an opponent you're never fighting an opponent you're always fighting yourself that was what, the, it, that, the only battle was you the only battle was you that's it because your opponent is basically going to show you where you're lacking. It's not whether you're good or not. You're always working on yourself. So you get someone who's at a higher level, who's at a noted higher level, and then you test yourself. They're, they're always a test, a test of you, of, of, of you unto you through them. That's why you, you show your respect for your opponent. For be, you know, possibly putting themselves in danger for you to make yourself a better person. Ding, ding. <laughs> and you learn more from Rest losing peace, than brother, brother. you do victory. Say it again. You learn more from losing than you do in victory. Facts. Facts. Because losing tells you your deficiencies and what you need to improve on. I mean, you never know. You never know all that you need to improve on. That's why it's good to have a guide, or a teacher, or a master teacher. I know some of y'all hate that hate that term and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A master teacher, a guide, a master. You know they call it the master. What do y'all? Why? Do, okay, in, in a dojo. Sensei. They call they call him master. They just didn't say master teacher. Or sensei. <laughs> it's sensei. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come by. <laughs> All right. All right, let's get back to it. Hmm. I think harnessed virality in a really empowering and impactful way for him. But what he does is just be super, super, super provocative. I could go out right now and do something very extreme and I'm going to get media attention. And if I know how to do that in a way that keeps me out of jail, <laughs> I'm going to keep getting more and more popular. And so Real I do talk, think real. that there's less 
um, attention being give, given to people that are making good decisions, that are thoughtful, that are nuanced. Facts. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think it probably does empower people to sort of um, pursue fame in any way, right? And, and I think that that, yeah, I think that's probably a, a problem. I hadn't really thought about it until you said it. Yeah. Yeah, because like, it's still it new. Um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, did you? I sorry to interrupt no, you. you. Did you? Um, did you watch? There was a show on Netflix called "The Most Hated Man on the Internet." It was the, and this guy named Hunter. I can't remember what his name was. I did. A, I did a reaction video to him. It was the re, I, the revenge porn guy. I think I've heard of it. Um, I think I think I've heard of it. Yeah. So it, so this guy starts this website called. He's a he's I dating. The, I, he, I, he's I don't like know what the website is, but he created some website where people could go on there and put nude pictures of their exes on there. And he became exceptionally popular okay, for doing yeah, this. And he's absolutely violating the rights of all of these people whose pictures are on the internet. This Netflix documentary comes out. Um, I do a reaction video. And then people start contacting me. Like they got my phone number and reached out and go, he's still doing it. Go on to, they go on to Discord. There's a whole Discord group around it. And there's this audience of people that could watch the documentary that could be, I think it was called Up All Night or something was the website but could watch this see this horrific thing happening and they and they're validating of it and and they want to be a part of it and it's fringe enough that they're diving into it and so i think what happens is not only are people emboldened by the attention yep. in general but because the internet is so big so vast you can always find your audience there's always people that are going to be supportive of whatever it is that you're doing and so hunters walking around thinking I'm Eve to me is basically uh -oh. freedom. It's a giant oh, open universe where you can do whatever you want. You can have. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Really Look relaxed, all the good stuff slow right paced there. stuff where you can take it easy. <laughs> you, you can, can do whatever you want. You can explore all these different lands and and go mining and fuck up shit. <laughs> oh boy, the world's gonna be very interesting in 200 years. I might take the chip just to see if I can live through it. <laughs> to all of these people, he doesn't recognize that the segment of the population that supports him is very, very, very small, right? But he's got a full Discord and a Reddit feed and all these things that validate him. Exactly. Like the internet has made it so that you could find your community and your niche. And like before that, you, you couldn't yeah. do that, you know, but you could find people who are anonymous, but will like agree with maybe the, the, the depraved things you're doing, but they're anonymous right. so they can go out there and like, you know, do what you're doing. Like a lot of people, you know, you know mm -hmm. how it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So I definitely agree with that. And that's not something I thought about before. Um, and guys, I just wanted to let the Psych2Go viewers know, please ask your questions because we'll be answering them at the end of the live. So thank you. And then, so do you think it has a psychological impact on younger people especially? And do you think it can influence them to try to emulate the actions of negative role models who are seeing others become extremely famous on social media? Like, do you think it has an even worse impact on our younger generation? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think YouTube is a, I mean, I'm on YouTube and I think it's a it's a problem in that well it's good so like to answer the first part of the question is it is valuable I like the fact that you can be whatever you want to be and I think because you can find your audience the individual is empowered I think that's wonderful I also feel like because YouTube youtubers have gotten so good at capturing the attention of their audience so good at, at it's like finding ways to give dopamine hit after dopamine hit after dopamine hit that the audience sort of thinks it's th this is the the best thing ever that they struggle dopamine hit after dopamine hit after dopamine hit um okay okay look <laughs> dopamine hit um if you're encountering something that you feel you're aligned with then that's different as far as i'm concerned you know what i'm saying that's different um that's different from worshiping right now i do okay 
what was old girl name? Uh, Jessica X, right? Now that was definitely worship. Okay, she was she was being worship. You know what I'm saying? Didn't have to show no picture, nothing like that. Uh, no element of our reality whatsoever. I think that I, if you, if someone's going to receive like mad amount of of attention like that, what what is the value of the interaction that they are giving? Now she was giving some. That's why I was asking this. If she was giving some information that was, you know, better than everybody else, or maybe, you know, maybe she was expanding upon the context. Then okay, I get it. But if she wasn't expanding upon the context and was just merely a, you know, pretty picture and a pretty voice, then it's like, all right, what is what is the worth of the value? Is it in the delivery? Is well, it Jessica is it, X? Huh? Jessica X, you talking about? Yeah. Well, all she basically did was, but and I'm not, I'm not analyzing her. I'm utilizing her. I'm oh. utilizing her as as a factor. The other factor could be what's homie name, uh, Professor Black Truth, right? Nobody know what this cat looked like. <laughs> or Jason Black. <laughs> or, or 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 Jason Black. Yeah, Jason. Well, Black. supposedly, Jason Black's picture was out there, so. All right. Well, either way it go though, the, before he put his picture up, he was anonymous for you know the longest. But you listen to his information that he was putting out, and you know it was quality information. It's like all right then. So his his his, his anonymity it, it, it didn't matter. Yeah, it, 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 it don't matter. It's, 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 it's being supplemented, right? Um, but 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 yeah. Um. For someone just to be getting dopamine hit, let's say that I, uh, Jason Black, he can definitely be um, entertaining, but he's largely informative as well. Um, yeah. So let's say there's some dopamine hits along with that. What, when you speak of worship, when they speak of worship, I don't know, you know, celebrity worship. I don't know if they actually understand what celebrity worship is. I don't know. Because they're speaking of in the age of social media as if perhaps maybe social media celebrities or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, to me, I don't put nothing. I don't know. If you're a celebrity, you're a celebrity. I never really put it at different levels well, like that. Because, it, uh, you know, anything, you know, shout out to KS. Anybody could become a household name. Well, I think the, the closest with, with celebrity being worshipped, I guess, is like, the Kardashians or people in their favorite reality show yeah. with these real these stupid ass reality shows when they were coming out. Uh, and I think it was more so into the character that they portrayed, but I think more so if I, I could see any celebrity being worshipped, I, I I think it's like the Kardashians that come to my mind. That's definitely worship. Uh yeah, because they got a lot of clones. They got they got mad clones. Uh, so, all right, well, that's worship. Um, but that was I don't know. That was kind of in, in, inevitable because before anybody knew that she had a uh, a job done to her or whatever, everybody was like, "Ah, damn that bitch, fine, look at that ass." And that was just off of the off of the muscle, right? When, you, when niggas ain't know what she was, I still don't know what she is. What, what she is? She Armenian, kind of Arab, Arme Armenian, Arme Armenia. Okay, so yeah, nobody knew what she was. It was everybody like, yo, man, y'all see Ray J's bitch? Hey, that bitch fine in the motherfucker. That's all cats was saying. They was saying, yo, she white girl or she had BBL and all that old shit. It's like nah. So if it was, if it was, if it was able to be objectively there to such a degree. Don't hate the player, play the game, right? It's going to happen in, in some regards, right? Um, you know, like I said, a, a chick that's a 10, she's a 10 no matter where she is. So what's to say <laughs> is to pull, is, is to be, and I ain't saying Kim Kardashian is a 10, right? But um, like I said, a chick who is a 10, right? The most extreme. What is to say is to be the extent of, of her influence? You know what I'm saying? And and can I interject something? I I, I think more so uh, when I'm listening to I think more so people are worshiping the position 
that the person is in not the actual person for the most point yeah, yeah. because that's what they aspire they want to be is in that position of gaining the attention and social and monetary wealth that they're accumulating from being in that position yeah that's what it is they see the attention that they're getting and they're like you know what i like that attention yeah, I, yeah. I, I want that i want that social capital yo attention is a superpower dog. i don't know what the hell what i don't know what, what is what is what attention is in is attention man look especially those with fragile and, and small egos that attention that that boosts you up that's like bane taking the super serum getting For real bro attention is phenomenal man it, it i don't know fam <laughs> i mean it's well attention is 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 it more is it more that attention is received as acceptance i think that's what it is i think that's what it is T attention like because attention can be manufactured right it can be manufactured but the response that people have to attention that's not manufactured that that means that's being possibly alchemized into a whole different type of essential you know what I'm saying energy that 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 a person could use like I think it's acceptance. I think attention is acceptance to people. Yeah. Just th the, think about these it. Am. These am. All right. Let's get back to it. That's fly right there. Mm -hmm. to 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 um, to wait and listen and learn. They struggle to find nuance. They just want to be entertained right now. And I think that that part of it is problem in particular for um for younger audiences and yeah. then i worry about you know not only does it change the way that they listen and learn but i think it also might impact who they want to be you know if i look at mr beast and that's what i want to be and i think about like i'm gonna oh, do all shit, these big crazy fun. things back to back to back to back um i worry that it sets up unrealistic expectations you know what that's a great that's a great point Dr. David, that's a great point. Mr. Beast. This motherfucker everywhere. <laughs> I didn't even know. Let's see. It was maybe about six months ago. About six months ago. I started hearing all this motherfucker, and then I was in Target. And I saw, I don't know, like some type of product that he got out and, and it was like i'm like yo i'm like yo this motherfucker don't like that word like already the, in the, the grocery stores the motherfucker has 246 million subscribers on youtube okay <laughs> all right yeah that's a that's a country in by itself all right yeah that's, 246 you know. million yeah subscribers so he's never going broke he, he, he's an actual nba <laughs> nba white boy <laughs> and oh shit. okay so if he put up anything it's just it's just like, he, he's he's an algorithm in of itself okay but but look at this right mr beast i'm looking at his videos his smallest video view is 88 million views <laughs> on a video he did seven days ago. A video he did three weeks ago was 145 million views, the engagement. So his videos is, most of his videos I'm looking at is half to 75% of his subscriber count is watching his videos yeah oh yeah yeah he banking he banking yeah so he's yeah, making he, he, he's at he's at the official youtube meetings <laughs> mr beast all right but yeah but that's the you know banking on the algorithm but that that also tells you again perhaps people have become um you know social condition to just entertainment period and it doesn't it does it doesn't matter what form of entertainment you know what i'm saying like now now you got people that do like just the same the same as people would do pr pranks on the hood 
people do those tear jerkers type of things where okay let me give you five hundred dollars and then oh yeah if, That's, if, if i've they, been seeing a lot of that yeah they run do they run up to a homeless black person that homeless black person is thanking jesus thanking god and pouring all of that energy into them oh i didn't know if your white ass didn't show up with this three thousand dollars out of you and all and everything is slavery and all that actual energy that them people is is feeling they get that shit get poured on to them people and then next thing you know okay you know what i'm saying that it, an endorsement here endorsement there i'm telling y'all y'all they you they, they using us man if it, if it, they spending us man i don't give a fuck if it's positive fuck positive Look, it is a motherfucker that fuck watch. Is it, is it going to be in? If it's going to be re respectable and just as fucking, it, it, just as fucking uh, it, it, you, distri distributive to the goods and the gold. God damn it! It's a dude that got million subscribers, and all he do is get haircuts and get shaves. He travels the world going to different barber shops to get his haircut and get his beard shaved. And there's millions of motherfuckers that watch him. There's a million motherfucking idiots out there, man. Look, check it out, though. Um, <laughs> we can't deny that most of the most of the world, on average, when it comes to actually being able to to navigate how one should navigate engaging, you know, I, I don't even want to call it entertainment programming. It's like the shit's not fake to nobody no more. It's like it's not set up. Like 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 the fact that it's set up doesn't take away from the reality to it, or it doesn't take away from the falseness to it. The fact that it's scripted doesn't take away from the falseness to it. The fact that that is mundane, right? Watching motherfuckers eat is getting people rich. Watching look. somebody do look. look if you if, if if anybody was is a handyman you, you good with some toes can you imagine if somebody would have had a camera on your ass 24 7 in 19, 1997 19, 1994 whatever you would have been worth billions of dollars just for people watching motherfuckers work man look things have become so watered down that people will accept any form of I don't know. It's, 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 that's, that's why I call these things screen doors, man. They motherfucking screen doors. People are watching people do mundane shit and people are getting rich off of that shit. It's like, would, who the fuck would have thought that, well, wait a minute, that's something I've been doing for 30, 40 years, whatever. I never thought just to put a camera there, just let people watch me work. And it's like, okay, and, and it's considered entertainment. And it's like, if that's the case, then if that is the case, then that means that there actually is possibly a much larger thirst for reality itself and perhaps the, the 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 societies that people are within are motherfucking illusions perhaps that's what it is that, that you know people they can't create a real reality themselves because they've already been born into a motherfucking illusion of a society of a of a reality what the fuck? All this mundane shit. Now I can look. Okay, there's a motherfucker who I, who I follow. This motherfucker, the baddest motherfucker on wheels when it comes to some nunchucks. All right? <laughs> the baddest. Nobody better. He does with nunchucks what you see folks do with like yo yo's and shit. And it's like, yo completely deadly the entirety of the time again just like bruce lee right um had i encountered something like that at a young age i'd have been able to understand that yo there's a lot of precision that goes into this that let's let's say that all right you know i i get captivated with such a skill it's like all right well he's one of the baddest ones to ever do it not simply because oh he's good and there's a lot of other people who's good with nunchucks no he's doing things nobody have, has ever done utilizing them in ways which se which seems so flippantly so flippant like why you know what I'm saying like why do it but you're still working with a deadly a very deadly weapon the whole time as he's whipping them shits around I'm looking for openness 
<laughs> That's how my mentality works. <laughs> Whenever you see somebody that really, really, all right, okay. I'm looking for openings. And he has none. Doing Jackie Chan style shit with it. Now let's say that that's his, that's his, all right, that's his job. Let's say he's an instructor. That's his job, right? That's not nothing that is mundane. It might be mundane to him, all right, whatever. But that's not mundane, right? Seeing someone set a brick, set a brick on a wall. That's motherfucking mundane unless they the baddest ones doing it. But that ain't the ones that you see. You don't see people doing all kinds of, you know, tricks. You see like maybe four people doing tricks. That ain't what you see people passing around. That ain't the, you see the real simple shit. And it's like, well, if that's the case, motherfucker, go be a bricklayer. Wait a minute. Are all these people interested in bricklaying? Where are they at? Where are they at? What land, what land are they in? You know what I'm saying? Like, like all the all this simple shit showing you that people have y'all haven't been attached to your reality. You ain't been attached to your reality. You've been attached to the to the the whatever the the illusion of a society, your market ass motherfucking system is. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, exactly. And so you think the instant gratification of social media is almost becoming like an addiction for a lot of like younger people? Yeah. I mean, I think for a lot of reasons, not and I was saying like the, the way the content's being created, like certainly if you like I have a an eight year old and a five year old, they would far rather watch YouTube videos than something on Netflix. Anything that Netflix is doing is too long. They want a three minute video that's like, you know, I mean, it's, it, feel, it feels addictive to them. You take it away from you take the iPad from them and they're pissed. Like it really <laughs> has an impact. Um, you know, I think the other argument, the opposite argument. Could be All right. So you see how she laughed at that? You know, oh, they're pissed. Look, it, who was it? It was, uh, you know what? I wonder if I could show this one. Hold up. Let's have another comedy break. All right, then we have another comedy break. Uh, Louis C.K. has a great bit about the power of entertainment on uh, on children, right? I'm going to bring that up. Yeah, that's a great bit. Because I don't know if any of you can remember playing a video game at a very young age to win you met your demise, jumping over the wrong thing, landing on the wrong thing, getting shot by the wrong thing or whatever, making the wrong maneuver. And as it happened, your body jolted, you jumped. <laughs> can, you, can any of you ever recall that? Whether you're holding a controller, hold up, it's this back right now. Whether you're holding, you know what I'm saying, a controller style, you know what I'm saying? Tari and shit. Or like this or whatever. I or you, do. Or you're, you're at the arcade or whatever. And and you 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 die, right? And you say you die or you lose a player. And as you do, you jump. That means you are immersed within that. I mean, that means you were brought back to reality because you were that focused. You were that you you were that laser focused to that degree. Now this ain't virtual reality. It wasn't virtual reality in the 1980s. It wasn't 4K screen. It wasn't the most vivid of colors that yeah, I'm nah. Double Dragon at the arcade, loud ass arcade. You know, what I'm or, or you know, what I'm saying, or, or not even at the arcade, at the corner store. You know what I mean? Playing Spy Hunter, and you get a good roll, you get a good run going, where you got the speed going, you catching everything. You know what I mean? It's, it's all kind of shit going on around all you all day long and Double Dragon. You feel me? 
but then, but but you could be so immersed within it with all of that going on around you to where you got to be brought back to reality can you imagine what can y'all imagine what it's like for for the way that that through use of these damn people trackers aka smartphones aka palm pilots aka electronic brain <laughs> aka the actual mark of the beast what to do mr beast we got your mark right here <laughs> oh shit can y'all imagine how interactive it is for children i mean come on it's it's the baby shark shit baby shark and all this shit what the what the fuck was that I, I I heard about it from grown-ups when it was when it was big. Now, have you heard Baby Shark? Have I heard what? Have you heard Baby Shark? Is that a, that's some new rapper? That's some <laughs> Baby Shark, little Baby Shark, big Baby Shark. <laughs> and I heard that shit from grown-ups. And it's like, yo, what the fuck, y'all adults, cuz what the fuck? You like what? They're like, yeah, people be playing it in the club. They play what in the club? A children's song. Are you shitting me? Why? Because it's popular? Guess how it, many I mean, people... you know what I'm saying? When motherfucker played Baby Shark at the club, what, did, did that get the yak flowing? You know what I'm saying? Did, did it stimulate a little, the bar sales a little bit more? <laughs> did we sell more Belvedere? <laughs> hey, roll, bitch. Yeah. Guess how many views Baby Shark had? Oh shit! That shit got to be at least at forty billion by now. Fourteen billion. Fourteen billion. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh boy! I can only imagine, bro. Oh, so, but but this this all tells you though. I think it really shows you how 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 easily simple minded not simple-minded but how easily programmable humans potentially are man i mean shit, it was it, it i can understand you know for children and everything but when you hear about it from an adult and it's like wait a minute but this is for children it was why do you know about it oh well, you know they talked about it on the radio show tom joining them and all that whoever the fuck it's like yo work huh <laughs> why just because it was something to talk about to be, you know what oh it was trending perhaps maybe you know what at that time whenever all the shit was going on perhaps that's what that's why they brought it up because it was trending and i don't i don't really rock with anything that trends i'm pretty sure things that trend probably just just gets famous on its own you know what i'm saying it's, it's that, that's probably some famousness that happens to it <laughs> Our new star, what to do, fam? Respect. Bam. So let me play this one with uh with uh another goat, Louis CK. Another Louis, you feel me? <laughs> Louis, Louis. <laughs> All right. Uh, I hope they let me play this one. You know what I'm saying? Cause sometimes, you know, it's fucked up because, yo, uh, all rights reserved or what the hell, what they say you say? Uh, fair use, fair use. Yeah, fair use, yo, fair use. You know what I'm saying? For real. Let a motherfucker make it. Uh, let's see. Children and entertainment. Oh, that was fly right there. Yo, the day will be going hard, nigga. Uh... All right, hold on. No, no, no. Uh, let's see. I hope... Oh, come on. Please be on here. Come on now. Uh... All right, this might be it. This might be it. It might not be. We'll see what happens. 
we'll see what happens. All right, then. Damn. All right. All right. So what I'm finna play is a channel, a Darsh Nandan. Okay, YouTube. So if you come at somebody, you go to a Darsh Nandan. Don't come to Rogish. Rogish didn't put this up. Rogish is using it. I don't even know if this is actually all right so all rights reserved you feel me uh what's that shit called what was fair that again, use, Lou? fair use yeah fair use <laughs> for educational purposes only there we go educational purpose only fair use <laughs> motherfucking matrix world cuz all right uh let's see okay that's already there Yo, that's a fly groove on that already. The deli. <laughs> Feeding like a mug, huh? We're gonna play that one again. All right, then. Uh, let's see where we at. All right. Let's see what Louis got to say. I think this, I think this is the one. It's nine minutes, so we'll see what we do. You know what's amazing to me? You can name your kid anything you want. Isn't that incredible? There are no laws. There should be a couple of laws. None. You can literally name your kid anything. You can name your kid a name with no vowels if you want, like Pinsingleton. <laughs> Just 40 Fs, that's his name. Okay, you know what? This is funny. All right. On the comedy side of the game, he stole this joke. <laughs> it's the joke that he stole from Dane Cook. <laughs> you want to be a snake? <laughs> That's a stupid. That was a funny bit, but yeah, he stole that from Dan Cook. All right. Go yeah. clean your room. I'd like to name my kid a whole phrase, you know, something like "ladies and gentlemen." That would be a cool name for a kid. This is my son, ladies and gentlemen. No, this isn't the one. Name your kid. This isn't the one. My bad. I know. I know. I know which is the one. They're not gonna let me use it. This isn't the one. The one that I'm thinking of is when he were he was act. I think the first circular stage that he was rocking. Um, yeah, that was that one. Okay. Well, in it, he talked about television and the effects that it has on uh on children. Like he don't say they don't. You know, let his children watch TV all. Uh oh. Um. I guess this is the Lewis Kanye show right now. So wait till Rogish come back. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Where you at, roguish? Uh. What's up, everybody? Art, what's going on? Is anybody here still? Yeah. 
Guess Rogish kicked herself out by accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Art. I, I, I think uh, Rogus was trying to get a um video, and he must have accidentally kicked himself out of the um out of Streamyard. Uh, I think he full, totally um masked everything on Streamyard with pulling up videos, or it might be something with his connection to his internet. Tell us your views on the economy. The economy is going to trash. That's where it's going. And how will it affect this election? <coughs> Part of me. Well, when anybody's pockets are uh, getting hurt. They're gonna go to the next uh next person they think who's gonna fix it. Uh, I mean, I, I make a pretty good decent living, but I'm feeling the shit firsthand with <laughs> electricity going up, food, oh psh, food, oh god. Thank God I was on vacation this week because much needed rest, but uh when I went food shopping two weeks ago. It took like two hundred. My bill was two fifty, and I only had four bags of food. Oh yeah, Rogish probably struggle streaming. I wish I had his uh, phone number. What? 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 Your your Wi Fi went out or? That's what happened to you. What? But your Wi-Fi had went out, son. Your internet connection. Oh, store. Oh, that's what happened with the store prices. Oh, how much did you spend at the uh, at the uh, the farmers market today, Art? Well, if that's what you're asking, um, I've been on vacation this week, so, um, but with the, 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 the prices, I mean, everything's jacked up, uh, even, um, with, uh, chicken, chicken is the, um, was traditionally one of the lowest, uh, the cheapest meats and that went up to, oh, Rogish is back. Yo, what the fuck? I'm talking to the shit and all kind of content. What the fuck happened? You struggle streaming? Nah, I ain't no fucking struggle streaming. What the fuck? 
fuck? <laughs> yeah, Louis Louis C.K. kicked your ass off for playing this fucking video. You know what? That was probably what it was. Louis C.K. got gotcha. Yeah, that's what it was. See, and that's the thing. If it's on, if it's on somebody else's channel, though, so how the fuck? Yo, that's that bullshit, man. What the yo? What the fuck? <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. All right, so how long? How long has how long has I been off this motherfucker? Then? Like uh, three minutes. No shit. Yeah. Yo, that's bullshit, dog. That's cold blood. Something just told me. Yeah, you know what? Because <laughs> I was playing it, and the shit went 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 directly to uh to, to like I don't know like like. The, the expansive one like yo what the fuck something went out i right, appreciate you holding it down dog all right then so damn i probably got a hit on that motherfucker then all right then my bad youtube my bad i thought i thought we could use videos that's on somebody else's channel or something like that right you, so how can you they sure use you didn't it? hit nothing when you was in uh stream yard because you had paused it with with louis ck and you said it was the wrong video you was talking about him on a round stage and was you pressing anything while you was in stream yard to kick yourself out of the the stream nah because i wasn't nah because you had paused it playing the louis ck video saying this wasn't a video about the kids you was talking about uh, the one you was looking for when he was on a round stage right and then after that you just Oh shit! So how to catch that? So I had, I had went back to the other video. <laughs> Yo, worker. Yeah. Yo. So how? Okay. So I. Right, so now I'm motherfucking offended. Then I. Uh. So how is it, YouTube? I know you motherfuckers is listening. How is it that all these other people can use all this content then and not get hits? And possibly even be having it, commercials to that I, shit. I, I, I honestly, only want to use two minutes, you mark motherfuckers. No, look, if it was something with copyright, because I got two screens running. Okay. On my, on my computer, I'm here on StreamYard, and I got my iPad with the YouTube stream. So if there was anything um, with copyright, YouTube would have been cut off. We okay. have still been talking, but people watching YouTube would have been cut off. Okay. So it was, it was something on your end where you must have hit something while you was a stream yard or it was your know. Wi-Fi connection. Do you got yeah, a hard wifi, line connection? Wi-Fi you got Wi-Fi or hard line? Yeah, Wi-Fi is good. What the fuck? It's... The the Wi-Fi must have kicked you off. Nah, cuz it cuz the thing is it's also running you know sitting on my phone to to my speaker and it's like it didn't drop on there. Wait, Wait. you using your phone? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm using using my phone for my for my Bluetooth because if I play the music through through um, Streamyards, it always lags when I listen to it. Okay. It's like yo, what the fuck? And sometimes I be want you know I'm an MC, cuz sometimes I want to hit you know what I'm saying a bar here and there if the beat catchy and everything, just like you in the lab or whatever. And it sounds like to ass something on, your on the playback. You feel me? It, it it was nothing on YouTube side because I'm I'm looking at the computer and I'm also looking at uh my ipad uh monitoring the, uh the chat yeah here in the room in, in your youtube channel and i'm looking at the screen here so a... if it was anything with um copyright the youtube video your transmission would have been terminated because that happens a lot when i'm on a bitter truth channel okay yo but that was weird though because i wasn't even on the the stream yard i'm on the, i wasn't even on the stream yard tab that's interesting all right then um <laughs> jake zero what to do you, you <laughs> that sort of revival uh let's see uh all right all right appreciate it our new star came to live as well so do you see local unions speaking out on which way they're going to go in this election or does it look like it's a toss up Terrific. oh well he had put that when you disappeared because i was talking about food um that's what's the, up the local ufcw they ain't mentioned they they haven't officially backed any uh person for president yet okay 15 bucks let us 
green beans, zucchini, cilantro. Fifteen dollars for that? Yeah, God. he went to uh, art. Uh, went to the um, the um, oh god, the uh, farmers market today to buy his food because we were talking about food. So that's what's up. This shit. Yeah, it was it was the Lewis Kanye show momentarily because you disappeared. So I, it's all yeah, it's all good, bro. It is all good. Thanks for keeping us sharp. You feel me? <laughs> All right, so thank y'all for rocking with us. You know, just now tuning in, you rocking with your funky neighborhood snooze kicker, rubber son. We got Lewis Kanye holding down the fort. Why? You know what I'm saying? Something is going on in the Wi Fi or whatever. I don't know. It's weird. But um, we're talking about celebrity worship. Um, does it worsen with tech advances? I'm counting artificial intelligence, I'm counting social media, I'm counting all this as techn technological advancements. And if it was already worship to begin with, right? As as stated by Dave Chappelle in the earlier part of the broadcast, if it was already worship, then what does that get enhanced into? You know what I'm saying? Because everything everything gets jetsoned, if you will, within this crazy ass future. Everything's going through a, a, a jetsonization of itself and it's becoming some hyper form of what it past was in the old world order so <laughs> so in this new world order what the fuck is celebrity <laughs> and well, technically you're a celebrity right now nah i ain't celebrate no a celebrity is so okay so celebrity is someone that is celebrated right i i don't believe myself to be celebrated and even if i was celebrated i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to be celebrated um not at all uh appreciate it okay we'll say that appreciate it even the whole element of revered right why uh someone would call someone a reverend while people refer to the pastor as a reverend well they're revered eh, i don't know i don't even know about being revered you know what i'm saying i ain't never needed no glory ever um fucking need no glory you know what i'm saying just you know let me know i'm doing good work by showing me that my shit is is effective and it has a lasting you know instrumental resonance to it but other than that keep your praise for you know saying all things the season get a season all things a guy get a guy <laughs> in this regard i'll be caesar you know what i'm saying you know what I'm saying? a caesar is doing what he's supposed to do that's why I rock, you know what I'm saying, with how the nation of Islam used to do it. You know, all praise do Allah. They wouldn't take none of the glory. <laughs> you know what all I'm saying? All praise to the most high. All praise to the most high, cuz, you feel me? I'm just a vessel. So, if anything, yeah, okay. Uh, appreciation at the most. You know what I'm saying? A donation here and there. All right, we can rock with that. <laughs> but as far as like, to be worshipped, to be like revered and all that, eh, you know what I'm saying? If you if you really are in a, in a position of service, then you're not doing it for that. If people have offerings that they offer, okay, that's that's how it works, right? All right, I can accept offerings. Praise can't accept praise. Thanks, I can accept thanks. Being revered, yeah appreciate it you know things that things that help people to stay human and realize that all this energy that you're working with all this energy that you're building it's not for the sake of you that way you don't get a big head that way all you know narcissism and all that ain't even a fucking possibility real talk too alkaline baby <laughs> all right i like that track that's dope Dr. Layla Africa. Yo, I wonder why she chose this as her background, though. This is weird. <laughs> that is so weird, but all right. Shout out to Psych to Go for the video. Respect to Michelle Rivas. All right, now. Everybody finds attractive, but there are body types that are 
differently attractive in different cultures based on what's pumped out through the media. And I really think in the, with Photoshop, I think there's really irresponsible influencers that distort reality for people. And it absolutely, if you are an in, if you are insecure, if you're not well grounded and you are consuming hours and hours of of people on the beach whose bodies have been modified via Photoshop, mm. it's damaging. I, of I think. Of course, yeah, you know? absolutely, it's damaging. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree with that. And do you think that sometimes, like, people will follow celebrities that maybe, maybe not, like, maybe it stems from a trauma or a mental health issue, such as like, you know, an eating disorder or body dysmorphia? I think you can get. All right, so she might be dealing with some body dysmorphia. Why she keep bringing this shit up? But it ain't follow celebrities just because you go through some trauma or something like that nah it's 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 entertainment you start off being entertained and then there's something with it you gotta remember there's a lot of money that people put into that these celebrities are backed by corporations you don't think the create the the the, the creation of their characters which a lot of people would love to possibly perceive as being their actual reality of that person. Come on, it's, it's you can't you can't just you can't just pin it off on. Okay, I think what y'all do y'all y'all give y'all give the society an out. That's what y'all do. Y'all y'all be giving the society an out that it hasn't earned. Real talk. Isaac T in the building. What to do, fam? Respect. He says, being revered and respected is an innate human characteristic. Functional societies reward individuals who contribute positively to the group via their labor slash intelligence or leadership. An example, uh, let's see. You remove the notion of community in a capitalistic society where individualism is exalted you have all these weird avenues in which that appetite for acceptance looks to be fulfilled. Well put. It's all about it's it's all about the connectivity. The thing is, was it was, was uh, Ubuntu? I am because we are. I am because we are. That's one of the dopest. That's one of the dopest universalisms that anybody could accept from. Uh, people of an African culture there's a lot you know what I'm saying <laughs> shout out to the motherland of the people um yeah it's just no to be an individual is is an illusion you you what old girls say oh um, I am not I'm not my hair I'm not my skin I'm not yes you are Yes, you are your hair. Yes, you are your skin. You all that. You all that 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 composes you. It ain't it ain't whether you want to be or not. It's not a, it's not it's not upon you whether you wish to be you or not. Whether you wish to be composed of that which which you are composed of or not. It ain't up to you. It is what it is. And you are only you because others also were. So that means that there is a value in your identity of that which is not directly connected to you, which you that you embody. You still there's still some embodiment with those so-called seemingly separated, you know, connections. There's, there's no separation. Now, if we had the understanding, like like I said. Uh, what was it? What was it? Spoke of earlier. I don't know if this was this broadcast or maybe a past one. When um, speaking of what it, what it means for someone to have their sense of identity taken from them, right? What isolation does within, you know, when people are locked up in prison who who get placed in isolation as a form of punishment they're robbed of their sense of identity eventually 
maybe there's some that gets put there and they don't go through that but that's largely the effect that happens robbed of their sense of identity meaning that there has to be some social connection just for your overall sense of you know better thinking better thinking of yourself better thinking even even possibly 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 even identify individualistic characteristics within yourself based off of an inadvertent or a defaulted just position of another not necessarily somebody that's opposite of you nothing like that but just the fact of another being being present what that means for one's awareness of everything connectivity means something and that's one that i'll be trying to get black people to understand like look why, why y'all think <laughs> come on everything everything that we make connects everybody and it don't connect us Somebody, some, somebody mimics something that they see us doing with something and they show us some, a couple of their friends and it links them to the degree to where they want to start enterprising with one another. Fuck, why don't that happen with us? <laughs> the fuck? You feel me? <laughs> Pass the $40, what it do, respect. Tevin King. Much respect. Can't call it John Gilly. Yeah, Indy I read. I'm not my hair. You is your you is your nappy ass hair, girl. That pretty nappy ass hair, girl. Yeah, you is. You your skin, yep. Yep. You that dark skin, you that light skin, you that caramel. Yeah, you that black, black Sudanese venom suit. Yep, you all that. Light, bright, damn near white. Red. You all, you all that. Co coffee, butterscotch. Yeah. <laughs> you all that. That ain't where you want to be. You ain't got no goddamn choice in that. <laughs> because others were. Who we, were, who we are composed of. So they are also part of our identity. They are also part of our individuality. If there could be such a thing. All that to say this. Please believe that I understand what it is I serve and whom it is I serve. Please believe that I understand, that I know what comes with the purpose that I stand upon, the principles that I stand upon. Might get me some glory or whatever, but you can only stand on these purpose and principles for the sake of service. You instantly have to know it ain't for you. <laughs> That's why my flow ain't never been for myself. I chose to speak for those too scared to cry out for help. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. All right, respect, respect. Was Kanye rocking with us? I should be in the bed. I this think it can topic. feel. Um, what's the right word? I'll just describe it. I think it can feel. Um, it, it can feel like things are. Re you can resonate with somebody that that says the bad or that shows the bad things about you that you feel. If I feel really terrible and then I listen to someone tell me how terrible I am, there's a part of that feels, there's part of that that feels like consistent and coherent and linear, like, yeah, I'm a bad person and you're telling me I'm a bad person and that this is where I should be. Does that, you know what I mean? It can feel like yeah. home a little bit. Yeah, but that comforting. home can be comforting and maybe is the right word, but that home is a, is a really terrible place. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? And so I do think that there is, some of that that goes on. I mean, people respond to trauma in such 
in so many different ways. Not everybody does that. Some people will try to ignore what they feel about themselves and do the opposite. But um, I think there's definitely a role that it plays. Yeah, definitely. And so, so is this the line where you feel like celebrity worship crosses from harmless to dangerous? It's yeah, I think celebrity jump. worship crosses, crosses that line. I guess. In is it ever harmless? Is celebrity worship ever harmless? Or how about this? How about the whole aspect of becoming a fan, right? Fan is short for fanatic. You know what I mean? Fan is short for fanatic. I need to send myself something because this was the whole reason why I uh, started this live. Art and Star TV, bam, says, because we are the magic Negroes, we don't need identity. Everything is fair across the board and equal, so we can just wish our way to success along with maintaining no real goal or purpose. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, the, 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 with us being those kind of magic Negroes for everybody except myself, oh, um, <laughs> how else are we gonna use a magic Negro? You know, I guess that's how. I, I guess that's how. How do you think we could use? I guess how they think that we could use our uh, our power. I don't know. I know I'm gonna get a hit for that one. <laughs> but um. I mean, look, I, our identity, we got the, look, we have the easiest factors present for establishing an identity because we're so fresh. Pardon the pun. <laughs> we're so fresh. We know, we don't have to, we don't, we, okay, we can guess on our, we can, we can guess on on certain areas of genetics, you know, thousands of years back. All right, then we, we get guests on that. We, we know exactly what was going down as of 200 years ago, 300 years ago. We know, we know exactly, we can, we can pinpoint, we can pinpoint to, to where we were at, at the lowest, to where any other people in any land would have said, this is us at our lowest through whatever is the cause, whatever would be the catalyst. All right. I would think that's where people would set their own rebirth. They wouldn't they, they wouldn't wait. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't understand why black people felt that they that they got to wait to establish some form of rebirthing with us. That's why I don't mind the slave ethos. We weren't we weren't just slaves. Yeah, the fuck we was. What's wrong with that? Did we stay that? No. Once we were unslaved, what did we do? Elevated ourselves to level of, you know, competition with those who had been established centuries prior. Eh, what's wrong with being a slave? What's wrong with being, what's wrong with being from slavery? It don't say nothing to your potential unless you're measuring yourself by the same cultural lens as those who enslaved you. And that's probably likely the case for a lot of people. That's why black people got a problem with just being black and establishing ourselves for ourselves as black with blackness, def de defining our own culture. Studying our own children through our own history, through our own reality, not attached to no other land, not attached to no other people, not attached to no other intention. Everything that, that went on with our reality, we studied that so that we learned us. For the sake of us. Not for the sake of trying to get people to interact with you differently, or to, 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 to I guess, I guess value you to your benefit. No, 
you solidify that within yourself as a group whatever fuck we wish to name ourselves or label ourselves or present ourselves as whatever solidify ourselves whatever and then everybody respond accordingly all other all other people all other groups all other cultures that you encounter they respond accordingly that's that's how it works it don't work with you establishing it through the politics of another nation unless you already are arriving with some form of you know a, a, a collective aggregacy if if it if that ain't the case what again dr amos wilson used to say what 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 what, what, what is it for me to respect your goodness you ain't got no power so you can be you can be better than me you can be morally better than me you can be morally you know good and all that and and want to you know you're a devil you're a devil they got all the power so by you know by saying don't you devil 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 and all that it's like well wait a minute eh, is that gonna take the devil out of the power then are you motive are you motivated to take the devil out of power if they is devils or are you trying to reach a devil's heart and if that's the case Look, don't hate the player, play the game. That means you're willing to put forth all that it, 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 you're willing to put forth all that effort and work that it takes to break through a devil's shell to I guess that goodness that y'all know is is behind that that spiky heart. <laughs> that spiky <laughs> I don't know. This this is how my brain works with things, all right? This is how my brain works with shit. That's how y'all can tell. Y'all one. That's how y'all can tell. I ain't really in this motherfucker for no, no narcissism or to be popular or nothing like that. I say shit like that. I already know I'm gonna fuck up some ally shit with some things like that. But nah, some things I got to tell it like a ti is in the same way that I would talk to my father. And I know that my father would understand some shit. He'd be like, "Well, yep, son, you make some sense with that." <laughs> he might not agree, even though Packerwood was a word that I learned from him. But he still had, you know. He, 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 he had pity. <laughs> me, I'm like, look, nah, this shit is just mathematics for me. I want the math to be math. I, I need these numbers to make sense. I can I can get to the feelings later. I can get to the feelings later because if the numbers is fucked up, that means the structure is fucked up. That which everything is built upon is fucked up if the numbers is fucked up. So why, you know what I'm saying? Why even put forth any element of healing toward, toward the energies? If where the energies are going to reside already contains that fucked up, that fucked up ethos. Why? Ah, the feng shui is off, mathematically. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> in, in two ways. I think it crosses the line when you have celebrities that are insincere. And, and when, they're, when a celebrity lies, I think it's a real about what's going on in their life if if that's what they're selling and how they look if that's what they're selling i think it's a real problem so that i started doing youtube because of i don't know if you ever did you ever follow dave and rachel hollis do you know who they are i'm not they're, they're a couple of motivational speakers rachel hollis wrote a book girl wash your face became super popular then her husband who was a disney executive uh sort of joined her team Almost. and they had a podcast together and they talked about how close they were and we have a wonderful we have an exceptional relationship um you know and they're saying they have an exceptional relationship on one week and then the next week they get divorced <laughs> and it was a very like sort of like uh, clearly we, a departure from reality and people are listening to them thinking i need to have a marriage like that i think yep. that when that happens that worship is irresponsible and causes problems the same thing if a uh -huh. kardashian is out there saying this is what my body looks like when they've had 15 people work on it through surgery makeup artists and then a photoshop artist i think that that causes it causes problems exactly because people think okay we'll see reality. but see you talk you're talking about a simulated reality so let's say that whatever these people are presenting it's re it's it's, it's the real life blood and bones of everything right okay well now we get into we get back into people's power of belief being used against them that's one of the that's one of the the um disembodied elements of a person i think is actually being taken from people i think i think people are being robbed and and their original organic power of belief is actually being used against them and it's very 
interesting that he would use that point of <laughs> like, yo, we got the best marriage and everything. And then kaput the next day. Nothing. But the information that they were giving, right? Okay. They received that, oh, you know, it's a Disney executive and and this uh, you know, other chick, she was an author, wrote a, you know, a feminist I think it was sound like a feminist book, sound like it. I don't want to assume, but I'm going to assume. <laughs> oh, was the information they were, they were given? Help to get you more successful? What, possibly trying to get people to think more mindful? They had their, obviously they had their money, right? Right? Each one of them was probably bringing more than six figures to the table. Okay. You know what I'm saying? about parenting, you know what I'm saying? Probably, I don't know if they had children, but, <laughs> you know, like, okay. She got a successful podcast, he got a successful podcast. He got he got a successful thriving business, same, you know, same as her and everything. He's, oh, everything looks so good. Clarence's parents have a real nice marriage. <laughs> but wait a minute, the affairs of the heart wasn't being tended to. The actual intrinsic values of the person, they wasn't being tended to. Yeah, they was they was effective in a job. Yeah. And it was effective in a job. It was effective, you know what I'm saying? It was effective in the boardroom. Yeah. It was effective navigating and showing people how to navigate the society and the simulation that they had put upon, you know, amongst themselves. But when it came to actually, you know. Everything's good one week, then the next week, no. Perhaps maybe the people thought they were being vulnerable then, but they were definitely possibly, you know, YouTube celebrities. The the reason that Dr. Uh, Colarossi brought them up, great example. Here today, gone tomorrow. But here today, established by what? Damn, that is funky. Zimiev. Probably a damn uh, Scandinavian <laughs> or Russian or something like that. Zmiev. Z M E Y E V. <laughs> Black people, this is our identity right here part of it the identity of our thumbprint the identity of our energy the identity of you know what I mean crazy black people are God's people you damn right black people are God's people but I think more black people are godly people I think I think we were regular people who tapped in how to become a godly people who, ain't, who wasn't ready for it <laughs> because we, we can't use it for ourselves we can't use it as a group it's like alright we use all this good for everybody else none for ourselves as a fucking group <laughs> that's amazing this is what I like to spit to though I'm gonna start I'm gonna start putting up some of the shit I'll be spitting to to this I know I'll be doing the sick mate shit but uh I like to speak to this. I like to spit to this just as much as sick mate Get you thinking. Anything that gets you thinking, it gets you writing. Anything that gets you writing, you should be listening to that 24 7. All the time. Yeah, and it distorts. Creativity. Yeah, if you Anything that gets you writing, anything that gets you painting, anything that gets you willing to work with your hands, willing to be creative, that's what you're supposed to be listening to. All the time. I think it's anything like, like even uh, uh, violent video games. There's a lot of debate about if it's good or it's bad, but I think it makes a difference if the person playing the game. And not only violent video games, remember, simulations, they're now becoming simu simulated reality. And is grounded in reality, if they have a reasonable self-esteem, if they have a healthy environment, then Grand Theft Auto doesn't have a negative effect. But if the kind kid of. playing doesn't know who they are, then that causes it's going to have a different effect, you know? Exactly. 
I think sometimes people underestimate that. They think that, like, no, well, you're your own person. It's not going to affect you, but it can. People think, who are I more think, susceptible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it absolutely can affect you. Absolutely. And then looking at it from, from the other side, I mean, sometimes, like, I was mentioning a lot about how celebrity and fame affects society, but looking at it from the other side, do you think that society's fascination with the self-destruction of celebrities, such as someone like Kanye West, um, do you think that's, like, what do you think, where do you think that stems from, and where's the danger in that? I think it stemmed, for, so first of all, I thought the way the media handled Kanye West was disgusting. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy that, in my opinion, not even in my opinion, just anybody looking at this that knows anything about mental health will look at him and go he's bipolar like he is in a he is in a manic episode this is this is a time for us to support him this is a time for him to get help this is not a time for tmz to shut to shove a camera in his face and ask him about different marginalized communities like that is not and and tmz or whoever the guy is with the camera knows exactly what they're doing and they don't care and so i thought it was just a sort of a disgusting display to be honest with you and i think that the reason why we do that the reason why i like, I like, I like how he takes the high road with this he goes the high road with this because it's easy it's easy to go the low road with kanye right but yeah kanye you know kanye ain't crazy kanye ain't no bipolar get the fuck out of here He's dealing with Hollywood. How, how, how else is he supposed to deal with Hollywood? Remember, potentially everybody is a goddamn molesting ass Satanist. <laughs> Who wants your soul, booty hole, firstborn, beloved, you to suck they dick, they to suck your dick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What the fuck? Offer a, a, a yo, put on a dress or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> so how you gonna deal with that how you gonna troll those who will actually troll lethal lee when you sign such contracts with such people i don't that ain't narcissism at all especially when, again i don't charge hollywood I don't charge Holly Weird to any type of accountability at all. You can't. You can't. It's, it's the same as someone who, who does bodybuilding and they use steroids. Okay. It ain't just in the steroids. It's also in the work that they're able to put in. So the fact that they'll put in so much amount of work in order to make the roids do what they do it's like, all right, then I can't really, I can't really judge it because you know you're risking life. You know you're risking life and limb. And it's like, all right, then you just took it to a level to where I know I ain't finna take it there. So, and even though, yeah, it's, it's, it's toxic and, you know, oh, you know, you ain't clean and all this. It's like, all right, well, look, if you're willing to go through that route, obviously you have a passion for whatever it is that you're doing. I can't deny that passion for you. It's like, all right, fuck it. Yeah, so I... I that's a new level about it <laughs> so when it comes to hollywood nah i love the fact that kanye be trolling hollywood and trolling america and the world the way that he do fuck this place cuz because they gonna try to get it out you if they can Shit. talking hollywood here we're talking largely jewish hollywood here them motherfuckers is always trying to get over are you kidding me are you kidding me? We want you, we, we want we want you to be a pimp. We want you to be a drug dealer. We want you to be a whore. We want you to be Can you wear a dress? Will you get fucked in this scene? <laughs> Can a little kid call you a boy to your face or whatever the fuck? All this all this weird shit that they want motherfuckers to do. Fuck that. Throw their ass back. Hurt their goddamn feelings. <laughs> we got this great Jewish movie. I mean, oh, excuse me. We got this great Egypt movie, <laughs> and Moses is going to be Jewish. <laughs> no, not Hebrew. Not Hebrew. No. <laughs> Fuck out of here.
but he's right. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to put the moral aspect to it, Kanye's supposed to be getting helped. You know, if it's if he's clear that he's he has you know what that, what is it called uh, bipolar. Okay. Like Hollywood isn't the type of environment that that would make someone crazy, or have you know what I'm saying their polarity their, their polarities somewhat off kilter, disbalanced, uneven. Oh no, not Hollywood. Nah, ah. Uh. <laughs> uh -huh. Camera in his face is because people are jealous. People are. Okay, tell um, them. It's hard to look at someone who is super successful. We like it when they're getting better and better. We like when someone's growing, but we like it more when they fall because it tells us that we are better than that person. They're all Shit, a wise, a wise pimp once said, they, they, they frown when you're up and smile when you're down. <laughs> They frown when you're up and smile when you're down and when you change for the better. Shicey fool, stop coming around. You see his jealousy and hating in the wicked ways. <laughs> Shout out to Phil C. Yeah. Capri can smile when you're up and frown when you're down. When you change for the better side, food start coming around. You see, I seen this that hurting in the wicked way. We all lost children. Got to the point where I cannot decide from day from night. She says she love me, but all we do now is fucking fight. My conscience fuck with me so much that I can't eat or sleep. The other side of selling dope and I here running the streets. And even though I'm claiming street frame coming from this rap game. <laughs> Alright, whatever. <laughs> High life, we live in a high life. Mm. <laughs> high life, we live in a high life. For a lot of people who felt mm. like Kanye West was superior to them, that felt like they could never be as successful as Kanye West, and they they um, they didn't like the fact that he, it's like Will Smith, people like the fact that you have this guy that is sort of like the model um, superstar, he falls and you go, look, you're not any better than me. And there is an empowerment when you can say, you're not any better than me. And I think we unfortunately love that. I agree with that, like society. All right then, so I haven't seen enough. Um, it's not gonna change nothing. Uh, I think they were just talking about how people were actually getting into it as far as it goes with, you know, social media and shit. And it's like, all right, look, I don't think that they were really was speaking on, on on the exacerbation that social media could cause and AI could cause, right? So we're talking, they were talking social media. I was speaking AI. I was speaking of largely uh, largely the fact that the utilization of these screens are going to get further and further sophisticated to the point to where the likeness I mean, we're talking celebrities right the likeness of the celebrity it, they're eventually going to start utilizing their likeness not the actual them and how are you going to be able to tell the difference those of you who have been acclimated to screen life, to these screen doors, forever and a day, right? Again, before the screen, when it was just 8-bit, when it was, you know what I'm saying, those tubes that would blow out and you would have to, you know, replace them joints. When it was just that, we could be so immersed within the video game that to discontinue was a jolt back into reality. All right, every, every screen now was high definition. Most of the applications that you are engaging, they're designed in the same style as you know 
electronic casino play. Meaning that continue putting quarters, continue putting quarters into the machine. Once I realized that there were some video games that they created just for the sake of seeing if people would continue to put quarters in the machine, like there, there were some video games like that. What was one of them? Dragon's Lair? I think Dragon's Lair was one of those games designed just for you to feed at quarters. Um, Gauntlet. Gauntlet was one of those games. You thought you was having fun till you realized this shit ain't ending, man. What the fuck? It's <laughs> it was just designed for you to continue feeding the quarters. It wasn't designed to be fun. It was designed, all right, let's see how we can keep people here. And let's just put as many different situations as we can just so they don't get bored. Not so that they get a major thrill playing. Nah, let's, let's, let's keep them here. Because the longer that they're here and the longer that they're at this machine doo -doo 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 hitting the buttons and shit as rudimentary as it is you're going to be spend you're spending time you're spending money to be there okay same thing the same thing like one of the reasons why i might fire up a live like when it when it when it hits me that you know, I'm, I, I get like like uh, uh um, I get a um, a note, an electronic note, an email, right, from uh, you know, I, I guess like internet provider, and they're like, yo, uh, we got this new feature or whatever, you know, try it out or whatever, and I don't, but I'm reminded that, yo, all right then, yeah, you you got internet, internet means something different than it does in the past. It's not just an element of all right, you know, where you can go somewhere to receive information. That's how I, that's how I, I, I rock with it. You know what I'm saying? Traditionally, all right. Uh, basically access to, you know, a larger library, if you will. A larger, a larger encyclopedia. That's all the internet was to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I understand that there are some people that turned it into a store. Okay. I saw it as a tool, but not as a primary usage for that, right? But now the entirety of it been turned to one fucking store. Yeah, all right. So I'm reminding myself that, all right, then, well, if that's the case, then you do, you do have a potential to be able to put a product out there that actually has some, some value to it. If it only is just information. What's the value of the, what's the value of the product of my information? Well, it's real. I'm not lying to you. I'm not making nothing up. I'm not presenting myself as nothing more than what I am. I presented some losses as well as some motherfucking gains. You know what I mean? And hopefully I'm also presenting some growth, some progress. Hopefully that's also being showcased. So that Y'all understand there's a return for the sharpening that I receive. Hopefully, you know, still sharpening steel. That I don't I don't know. I I've I've never known how to make things that wasn't the world my world. As far as it goes with celebrities, I ain't cool. I met celebrities before, you know what I'm saying? It's, you see celebrities from time to time in Southern California. You, you see celebrities from time to time out here in Dallas. Shit, this, Dallas is a hub. <laughs> you be saying about here, right? Um, eh, they people. As far as I'm concerned, there are people who who who's good at at entertaining. I right, think that don't mean that they supposed to be worshipped, appreciated. Yeah, but worship. Unless they just like the baddest, unless, 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 okay, let's say this. If they are 100% top tier, not based off of how they're measured in the box office or how they're measured, you know, on, on a uh, sound scan or anything like that. 
It matters not what Universal or Clear Channel thinks of them. <laughs> All right. Okay, yeah. James Brown, yeah. Michael Jackson, Prince, of course, okay. You know, Michael Jordan, of course, okay. Of course, come on, larger than life. Mike Tyson, of course, larger than life, okay. Malcolm X, larger than life, of course. Right? All these people that are, you know, that first presented as celebrities and everything. Larger than life. Okay, cool. Those who are larger than life, I let's say that they, you know, potentially could could run into some inadvertent worship because their light is just so bright. Hey, right, if it's if it's one hundred, it's one hundred. If that person is of that that essence, that person is of that sustenance. It is what it is. But not as the the original the the default get down of interacting with celebrity that don't make no damn sense it don't make no damn sense for every celebrity to be interacted with as if they're just you know what i'm saying oh my god you're on tv so or 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 i've seen you in in some form of print or presentation of propaganda whatever the fuck wow because i'm telling you when i when i when i first had my big ass camera and i'll be going around and you know, I held that motherfucker like that, right? <laughs> yeah, I had going around town and film, and I'm just filming, right? I'm just, I was just, just be filming. Nobody would even know what I was filming. They wouldn't know what I would be filming for. They see me with that camera. Next thing you know, click. Everybody's a performer. Everybody's perform. All the women get extra giddy. And want to show me the backside. Like they all nervous and shit. Oh, I don't know what to do. Next thing you know, here come that body. Damn, baby, is that the reflex? Is that what you do? Anybody got a, probably got a camera? I don't remember. I don't recall. Yummy. You know I mean? And not to, be, not to just be subjective and anecdotal, but... I can recall as a youngster when somebody at a camera wasn't always, okay, take a picture of me, take a picture of me. It's like, no, nah, wait a minute. He, what about looking at some of the pictures that they've done? That's my thought. You know what I'm saying? If I see somebody with a camera, hey, you know, I see some of your photos. You want to take a picture of me? Nah. But that's what that's the way that people would carry it. Like, like, yo, okay, yo, yo, okay. Can you can you get me? Can you get me? What you doing what? You don't even know what I'm filming. You don't even know what I'm shooting. I'm filming the city. I'm filming, I'm filming, you know what I'm saying? What was it? The name of it was a, a Southerner in Santa Barbara. <laughs> a Southerner in Santa Barbara, right? So I'm just filming all kinds of stuff. Not, not people, just trying to see if I can understand this weird ass place. The Santa Barbara was weird as fuck beautiful and stale like what the fuck full of full of potential life you know the, like the vibrantness there the the colors and the hues and all of the essence was there but the actual life wasn't there you know what i'm saying it looked like it was supposed to be vivid the fact it was in southern california it's like, damn, this is California? What the fuck is wrong with this place? You know what I'm Like, there was always a haze over it. Like, what the fuck is, what is, what's up with this place? Just, ugh. <laughs> Felt it when I landed from the plane. Soon as the plane landed. I'm like, what the fuck was that? And then you look out and it's like, yo, it's, Damn, it's hazy as fuck here, but you can see, you know, it look like Cali, but what the fuck? What, what, what is this haze? You know what I'm saying? Like Silent Hill. You know what I'm saying? One of the, one of those scary movies where it's just it's just a constant haze of something. Okay. Then I realized what the hell happened there. Oh, okay. The Native American connections and stuff there. Like, oh, okay. Ooh, okay. I'm feeling. I'm feeling some evil, some evilness here. That's what it is. All right, I get it now. 
That's why everything can be can look like it's supposed to be beautiful, but not contain that 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 life force within it. Like wow, you know you. <laughs> so, uh, our new sauce. So yeah, Miss Pac Man. Yeah, Miss Pac Man designed just to you know put them quarters in there, just to feed, just to feed, just to feed, just to feed. I'm telling y'all, this is one of the main reasons that I deliver how I deliver so that nobody gets caught up with, with, I guess, a consistency that could be perceived for the sake of the stream, for the sake of the broadcast, for the sake of, well, you know, let me keep people in the room. That's not how I rock. <laughs> That's not how conversations rock, right? We having a conversation. That regular conversations don't rock like that. If there were some other people here with me, I you would hear them talk and me talk. You wouldn't hear me trying to overrun the conversation because it's my show and we in my spot. That's not how conversations work. That's not how good conversations work. That's not a good use of somebody's time. This is this is why I I I'm telling y'all the things that I talk about on here I'm thinking about hard <laughs> because it makes me wonder like what's you know I'm always thinking about the future always um always it's just you know what I mean <laughs> that's what nerds do if you're a nerd. If you're any any real nerd, all y'all think it got something to do with fucking <laughs> comic books, anime, and dressing up and all the fuck that shit. If you're a real nerd, you're thinking about the future. Yeah. Now, how far in the future? I guess, you know, that depends on how nerdy you is. But, yeah, I'm always thinking about the future, especially when it comes to people. Because what people mean to a society is, is that which, which permits a society to be. But you also have to have, you have, you have to, I, I, it makes sense to have a healthy understanding of that which helps to keep a, a, um, or an adequate understanding of that which helps to keep a healthy aspect to the people themselves what could be presented with them that that would disrupt any of that essential integrity connectivity all of that because okay i'm human but i'm only human because other people are other humans are present We're, we are only what we are because of the connect the, the collective real talk without no collective there is no us and that's one thing that a lot of people should understand that's how it is with a lot of things within reality a lot of things that live and exist must exist in a collective that is that is an organic state for this reality not selected it is one of the isness the isness is <laughs> it is. I don't know how else to say things like that. Some things just is. Some things just are. Something is the state of life itself. Not any social preference. And when it comes to celebrities, they've already been worshipped. Now all your celebrities are, <laughs> what dare I say, um, motivational speakers. All of them. K 
Kevin Gates with his old weird ass. Motivational speakers. Rick Ross with his old identity thieving ass. Motivational speakers. What? Plies with his ignorant motherfucking ass. Motivational speakers. It's like, wait a minute. Don't you already got to be about it? <laughs> it's like, all right, is, 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 that, is that all that you have to do to the people now? Just talk positive? And now you've, you're a motivational guru. You talk positive and, and you're there. They already, they're already celebrity. They're already, you know, worship to a specific, to a certain degree. I think this was, this is, if y'all, um, what is it? Uh, one of my earlier videos. Um, hood, hood politicians make, wait a minute, uh, what is it? Hood, hood, hood politicians make, make good politicians. Yeah, hood, po hood politicians make good politicians. Like what they're what they've segued Jay Z into, and you know what I mean. Like, I don't know how old y'all was. Well, I, 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 uh, when I found out that Ronald Reagan was an actor, was was a former actor, I think I was like, I don't know, like maybe, I don't know, like. Probably second grade, third grade, or something like that. You're like, what do you mean he was an actor? Yeah, Ronald Reagan was an actor. He was an actor. How you get to be president and, and he's an actor? But it, okay, well, the thing is, it's all politics. When you listen to someone speak for over, if you hear someone giving a lecture, there's going to be some politics involved with it. There's going to have to be. Um, if you have someone campaigning for, or if you have someone speaking with an intention of particular motives that they want you to be aware of, possibly even aligned with, values, standards, all of that, that's politics. That's what, that's what it largely was with, with those cats in the past. I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. You're politicking. Same thing as with these, with these brands, uh, these actual, actual name brands or whatever, official brands, all right. They're politicking. Coke or Pepsi. That's like Dave Chappelle presented earlier. He's, he's done commercials for Coke and Pepsi. He said, why the fuck y'all listen to what I, why do y'all believe anything I say? <laughs> I say anything, fuck it. Pepsi paid me more recently. Tastes better. But that's politics. Coke and Pepsi. You know, which one tastes better? As if they have similar formulas. That's what everybody wasn't paying no attention to. And I, re and I remember paying attention to that as a youngster. Like everybody trying to set up the, the Coke and Pepsi challenge on their own. Talk about viral trends and shit, right? Y'all remember that? And I would, and I didn't, I wouldn't do it. I didn't want to do it simply for the fact that I didn't want to participate in something that just seemed like it was like, what the fuck are y'all? They, they, you know, they put it on TV and y'all finna do it? It's that easy? Now, how long ago was this? Do y'all remember? Can you recall the Coke and Pepsi challenge? Or was it 1985? <laughs> 1986, 1987? What was it? I know it was the 80s. And however young I was, I didn't want to participate for the fact of how drony it seemed. And everybody like, well, you know, well, did you taste it? Did y'all do it? Did you do the challenge? Well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it when I get home. The fuck? You ain't even gonna tape it. It's the '80s. People aren't even taping them. And it's like, look, it, what 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 it what it showed to me was that 
they were trying to showcase who could dance the hardest. It was talk. It, they were talking about soda. It was about soda, right? I right, then. But other than the taste test, what they used to persuade people was commercial. We can give you the best illusionary feeling for our beverage. Listen to the way our paid spokesperson sings the song versus their paid spokesperson sings the song. <laughs> oh, Arnold Starr said he was governor of Ca California first. Yeah, he was a governor of California. Well, I can only imagine what old Ronnie was to y'all in California. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wonder if that when he came up with the welfare queen. <laughs> Governor of California. An actor, then a governor, then the president. That's what actually had me stop kind of believing in it. Because I thought all the president, you know what I'm saying? As a youngster, you don't know where the fuck presidents come from. Nobody teaching no shit like that. But when I realized, you, okay, you could be an actor. What the hell? All I had to do was was look, keep looking back in the presidency. And then I've I seen Tricky Dick. And you know what I'm saying? That, that would have nullified everything. <laughs> For real. Black people should be teaching Nixon. You're talking about celebrities and shit. You know what I'm saying? All black people want to have, well, now it's Obama, right? They ain't got Obama up there. First it was John John F. Kennedy. I remember John F. Kennedy was in all the black homes. The the trifecta of positive, positive people to have on the wall, right? <laughs> oh. But we also had women on on the walls in our house, though. You know, so they weren't the main three. But we also had, you know, we had Citron the Truth. Uh, they had Harriet Tubman. Uh, I think that was about it. That was about it. But everybody, you know, John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr., <laughs> Lincoln. <laughs> but now Obama's up there now. <laughs> But if they would have put Tricky Dick, if they would have put Richard Nixon, yeah, we would we'd have known everything. There's so much history that's connected to Nixon. He became a celebrity in of its own right, right? <laughs> but we could use celebrity. We could use celebrity to our benefit. Now, celebrity don't have to be a negative thing. Now, notice I'm talking about celebrity worship. I'm not talking about the fact that a person is celebrated. Again, they might do great work, which in return could possibly cause one to revere them, right? Or, you know what I'm saying, at, at, at its most egregious, you know, worship, you know? Belie start to begin to believe in. I don't think you're not. I don't think you're supposed to believe in a celebrity. You're just supposed to experience them. But this is the power of belief, right? This is the objective power of belief. That's why people should understand what the objective human power of belief, what that power really is, because that's why y'all start worshiping these celebrities. It, it, it. That's why y'all start worshiping these celebrities, because you you start to believe it, just like all those foreign people overseas. That caused me to want to create my own television network. When it hit me that yo, they y'all wait a minute, they believe it. I understand we all laughing at them because you know the foreign little foreign people don't know what they talking about. Ha ha ha! Let's laugh at their ignorance. But it stopped being funny when you realize that yo, they they believe it. Things that are clearly you know fanciful for us. It's not fanciful for others. It's reality for them. And when you take your reality, when they encounter you in the in the same reality, they present values applied to you that are fanciful. 
that in all right should be because no one in their right mind would do any of the shit that you know what i'm saying that they're showcasing on any of this <laughs> but they think that you know what black people are we're so much out of their right mind to where wow this is this kind of people that they are and then lo and behold you know 20 years later or whatever <laughs> it's like yo okay 22 years later all right that you find out that's what black people wanted actually wanted the large amount of themselves to be showcased as a problematic sort when it came to social harmony a, pro a problematic sort when it came to refinement a problematic sort when it came to yeah you know i mean it's like yo really all for naught all for naught what i should have did <laughs> what i should have did was just stay the gamer that's it for real think about it with this personality and all this shit playing video playing video games as well as i do, as i was woo, woo. i'll tell you i was good <laughs> But I drop all that because it's like, you know what, nah, let's focus on this. If I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it for real. You know what I'm saying? Do it for the folks. That's what they need, right? It's what my people need. And no, nope, it ain't what it ain't what the people wanted. The people wanted ratchetism. The people wanted that large fake ghetto-ness and the shit. I, wanted, I was the one that wanted to put it out there. Look, y'all got to understand where all this shit comes from. It wasn't always like this with us, right? All this ghetto shit. It wasn't always the case for us. Feeding on one another like that. That wasn't always the case. And, and even if, let's say that is the case in some regard, from this perspective, here's some source material so that you can have some, some added contextual understanding as opposed to just merely being a spectator to all the, you know what I'm saying, fire and the explosions and the booms and the and the gore and, and the, the the purposefully placed shock moments and everything. And the lewdness and the ratchetness. Almost to beg the world, like, please understand that this comes from someplace. This, is not, this isn't just us in our entirety. Let's say it's a portion of us. It ain't the entirety of us. That's why the name of my, my television network was going to be What's Missing. What's Missing. Welcome to the What's Missing Network. <laughs> Where we provide the loss or the, the, the disregarded or the marginalized nuance, contextual understandings of black reality. <laughs> even though within yeah I was wanting to hate on all that other stuff that was out there that was distorting us unto the world but it's like nah no nope. let me even approach that from an element to where it ain't egotistical it ain't you know what I'm saying it's still serving that as well that ain't what the people wanted the people wanted ratchet the world wanted black people ratchet Black people want to express in something. Remember, attention is acceptance. This is my fault. This is all my fault. I'm still thinking about attention. I'm still thinking about believability. I'm, I'm still thinking about reputation. I'm still thinking, you know what I'm saying? Legacy, all of that, right? There's nothing greater than acceptance to black people. Nothing. That is, the, that is the highest ethos of black people, acceptance. In any form or fashion. I was out of pocket not understanding that. <laughs> yeah, I was out of pocket not understanding that, but I'm out of water, so I'm finna get up out of this piece. Appreciate everybody for coming through, you know what I'm saying? I'd like to thank y'all for sharing your most precious element of your time with our thoughts. I'm beyond honored to shall forever remain so. 
that y'all do such for your sharpening is a blessing and it is appreciated. Appreciate Brother Lewis Kind, you're coming by, you know what I'm saying? Respect. Coming through, holding it down, you know? Everybody who came through, Art New Star, Tevin King, respect. Pastor Folded, I love Isaac T. Jake Zero, Shaka Nulu, I'm listening. Big Brother Almighty, and all of y'all who was in the clouds. Appreciate y'all, you know what I'm saying? Hollering at us from the high seats. The moral of this joint is, uh, oh, and by the way, y'all notice when I say, you know, uh, the, moral, the moral is, there's a, a comedian who's no longer with us. Uh, what's the brother name? David. He's a comedian out of Atlanta. Short brother, dark skinned. Uh, locked out, funny than the motherfucker. David, I gotta look it up. I gotta look, it ain't David. Nah, it ain't David Walsh, I forget homie name. But he used to always say it, like, you know what I'm saying? The moral of the story is. <laughs> I looked him up not too long ago and found out he died. I didn't know he was dead. I didn't know he was dead. I just was thinking about his style of comedy. He had a bit where he said, or uh, so, a heckler, somebody had a heckler. He had a heckler and he said he said something to him to the point of, what did he say? He said, if, if I had a time machine, <laughs> I'll go back in time, make your mama swallow a brick while you pregnant in her belly so she bush me in your motherfucking head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was very, that was, it was, it was very creative. <laughs> but yeah, the moral to the joint is, look, y'all. Uh, I guess when it comes to uh, celebrity worship, yo, worship who you want to. I might try to get y'all to worship. I'm trying to think that. I'm trying to get y'all to understand when it comes to uh, any of this thing, any of these things within the age of advanced technology. Everything's gonna be exacerbated. So, potential celebrity worship, all of that. As always, be well to yourself and better to each other if you can. Holla. <laughs>